Vibe check. Oh my guy sat down. Hello everybody, this is Norman Reedus and your host Arnold Schwartz and Brunel. And uh, I guess today we're gonna play some games. It's late night, it's one o'clock currently. And this is the comfort game, the ultimate comfort game. Dead Stranding. And we're about to uh, chill, interact, listen to music, maybe watch some DSP if I legit can't sleep. But I don't know how I can sleep, uh, considering I just made myself a coffee. Uh, now I'm gonna do some deliveries, we're gonna talk about the things in life. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, gonna be it. It's gonna be a super low effort stream. And you know, it's because I'm playing Death Stranding, man. That's a super low effort game. Now, Death Stranding is a game where you walk, where you drive, where you deliver. Actually, let me get a delivery first. All right, I, I should probably boost it a little bit. All right, now that's it. Uh, big ups everybody who checked out the stream earlier. It was a very fun time talking about Will fucking Smith. Uh, all right, let's take on a delivery. I never liked the, the bot deliverable ones, man. I guess for those of you who are not familiar with this game, I should probably explain a little bit. Uh, let's do this one. Now, this is a package... Three or more, I can do that. A package delivery simulator in the post-apocalypse? Where a lot of weird shit happens, and you walk around with a baby on your chest, because that's how life works. I don't think I'm gonna need any of this equipment. Now, the game is made by the iconic Hideo Kojima, a dude behind such masterpieces uh, as PT, the game that never even came out, but it was a masterpiece. Classic, haven't played it yet. And uh, Metal Gear series, man. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Hey, big ups, Everlove. I like this game too a lot. Really a chill game exactly for, for a time like this. I just want to hang out, play some games, then go to sleep. Uh, now I got the order. I gotta deliver it there. This should be a pretty basic one. Uh, I've actually completed the game already. It's uh, the last couple of hours. Man, that shit was tough. It was really obnoxious. Because it, it gets really tedious. Really tedious. Uh, and it's kind of one of those like self-aware tedious moment, but it's like he couldn't help himself. Kojima, man. Damn you, Kojima. Let me just see if I'm on the right track. Because I haven't played this game since the last time I played it, which was a long fucking time ago. And I just installed it for this stream specifically. For this amazing content. Uh, okay, it's there. Oh, I see some zip lines. Maybe I can pull it off. I don't exactly remember the layout of this terrain specifically. All right, let's go on the on this. Now I'm not that big of a fan of driving with uh, with vehicles on the terrain like this, especially most of the people that shit on this game that I see and shit on it about the terrain and and how you drive on it. Uh, I seem when I see gameplay of theirs, they're always driving on rocks and shit like that. And it's like, bro, it's, you're not supposed to do that. It's just not that, that's not how it's meant to be played. Yeah, Jab Dog, it's a, it's a back to back stream, like a Drake style stream. I'll see if I can get this zip line maybe to up there. Because, as I can see, uh, it's probably not going to be that tough to get up there. Okay, the zip lines are amazing. But I don't know if I'm going to get the chance to actually zip somewhere. Oh yeah, I do. 250 meters, that's awesome. Yeah, zip lines, I love them. I love the zip lines. And because they're really rewarding when you actually take the time to set up your route. 
because once you set it up, like in this case, I'm gonna give this dude a lot of likes. I'm gonna give him all the likes. He's gonna go viral. Hold on, how do I like? I think I need to, to drop from it first. Well, I kinda have to. Uh, yeah. So, as I was saying, when you set up your route, Thanks for the help. It, it really pays off in the long term when you can pick up several orders and just ship them across. Man, I gave him so many fucking likes. He's going viral. Awesome. I love doing that. Because it, uh, it's some of my favorite multiplayer component in any game ever. It's just so man, uh, it's so good. When you can build something like this that's gonna help somebody else and also help you as you, you put up your... Uh... What was that? As you set up your infrastructure. Uh, yeah, this is how the Fe FedEx delivery is gonna be in the future. Gonna be dude in an exoskeleton. Or oh, probably drones, though. Oh, what's rainy time? Alright. Am I really far off, off the target? The fuck? Like I said, I hadn't played this for a long time. Might completely be going off the, off the road here. Um, oh, this is quite all right. I can just keep going this way. And all right, we got BTS. Now the BTS are, let's say, ghosts. For to, to oversimplify, let's just say they're ghosts, and I should definitely avoid them. And this little robot hand is showing me where they are positioned. Now, if I'm weaselly enough to get past them, I might not get into an encounter. But I probably will. Because, uh... This is how you don't play. Okay, maybe I will manage to get past them. By going next to the rocks. Do I have any gear I can fight them with? Oh yeah, I got, I got me an assault rifle with blood bullets. Yeah, that's gonna do some damage. And oh yeah, I got plenty of stuff. It's all right. I'm gonna do fine, even if they if they decide to go and and try and bust me. All right, I think I can drop here. Oh, I forgot how how sensitive this is. I need to try and not bust my ass completely while climbing these rocks. Oh, where can we go from here? I think I can put up a ladder or maybe I can jump. Yeah, I can jump. Yeah, the multiplayer in this game is, is really wholesome, man. I love it. And you help each other out. And in the end of the day, everybody just makes more deliveries. And it works like a, like a, like a real company. Can I drop from here? Am I going to damage the goods? Probably not. All right, all right. Let's go with a climbing anchor on this one. I'm not gonna be falling like this. And no space. All right, this this should work. Oh, rappelling also. I love it. I love it. It feels so good. Climbing down and and dropping more rope. What? Oh, they got me. They're on my ass. They are on my ass. Baby is crying. Ghosts on my ass. But they're not, but they are. This, oh yeah, they are, fuck. Okay, 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 okay. Gun. Okay. Alright, and now, now this gets nasty. Uh, I gotta figure out which way to run. I'm gonna run. I'll run. Okay, we're just gonna struggle for a little bit. Oh no, I dropped all the shit. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's all right. It's all right. I'm out of it. I'm out of it. Just climb on this. Climb on this. Shoot at the goo a little bit. I have a grenade. No grenade. No grenade. Uh, what is this? Flip flops. I don't need flip flops, bro. Okay, this should be okay. I just want to pick up my shit, okay? Can I do that? Let's just grab everything. Try and cheese it through. Get my resins. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Before the big monster comes. Before the whole map turns into a monster. Okay. Alright, I damaged this. 
this so far it's not very good but considering usually I get a very high score on these on these deliveries so it should be all right but right now I'm very far off very far off and yeah this shit's not gonna get any easier I guess I just need to keep going around so I can actually get back on track but it shouldn't be much because here I can see there was a zip line and once I get to that I should be all right I should be all right in the meantime I need to stop somewhere to take a sip take a sip of coffee what the fuck man what the fuck more more BTs Fuck me, now I'm gonna fall again. Or they're gonna grab me. Alright. Fantastic. Baby is crying, I dropped all my shit again. I didn't even get to detect them. Fucking Kojima, man. Thanks, Kojima Productions. <laughs> now I gotta stay here, I guess, because I don't have any grenades. Guess I can shoot this guy in the face. Can you fuck off now? No? Alright, sounds good. Sounds good, let's shoot some more. Alright. How about now? No? <laughs> this is hilarious. Alright, let me reload. Okay, can I go get my stuff now? No. Now? No. Alright, it's gone. It's done. And I should probably use my scanner to actually care about where the enemies are. So I don't have to stop and drop all my shit every 30 seconds. Okay, so I am walking in the proper way I think I think now it's it's all right I should be able to get through and up there there is a shelter which is a perfect place to take a sip and right there is uh, actually a zip line which is the first thing I'm gonna go to the shelter is not actually all that important uh, basically yeah that's the game I'm trying to deliver what is essentially DoorDash? There's even a, a pizza delivery mission. You deliver all the packages and you fight the zombies. Uh, the ghosts, sort of. And you watch the cutscenes. That's actually one of the most important parts. But there's a lot of celebrities in the game, man. Alright, we got the zipline. Let's drop a bunch of likes to this dude. Thanks for the help. And now probably the baby's even gonna stop crying. This one's for you. Today's a good day. Alright. Well, okay, this is actually pretty cool. And then we got the other one right here. And this is where we're going. We're gonna take a sip of coffee. Yeah. Mm, authentic and robust. Alright, wow, and there is more. I love this. And this is what the zip lines do. This is the power of the zip line. And is there more? Oh, there is one more, but that's one uh, 300 meters away. Obstacle detected. But maybe I can build one that is somewhere in the middle of this that's gonna connect both of them and it's gonna make for a nice transport route because down there I know there are BTs at some point and I really don't want to have to deal with them every time but right now I don't have the building supplies uh, to pull this off so I won't and I'm just gonna go raw oh yeah there's also monster energy in this game monster energy drink that's the main thing that they drink uh, in the post-apocalypse, which is a very bizarre post-apocalypse. It's not your, your run-of-the-mill post-apocalypse. Um, but I gotta say, the, the game is written with player. The writing is ambitious. 
Uh, I, I can't say necessarily if, if I think it's good or bad, because I think it's, it's ambitious and uh, should very much be respected. That is just the vision of one guy and he managed to realize a world like this. Uh, I, I do think the writing is, is pretty good. Uh, but if somebody says it's whack or it's like way too goofy, I, I perfectly understand. I perfectly understand. This is one of those games where you actually kind of have to try and like it. You have to try and get into it. Otherwise, it's just not going to work with you. Uh, and if you're not a fan of trying to get into games, then just probably not going to like it. And this is the gameplay, this is what you do all the time, in different kinds of terrain, with different kinds of packages, with different means of transportation, but this is definitely what you do most of the time. What is this, a structure? Uh, oh, this is bad, uh, this is a shelter, very nice. I'm gonna drop some likes. Thanks we restore the condition, because when it rains, uh, it ages everything. And now I'm gonna pick up somebody else's package that they dropped. Um, just so we don't have just packages laying all over the place in the forest. Okay, so far so clear, I guess. Uh, can I take this truck? I can. Oh, let's take it. Oh yeah, definitely you gotta suspend your disbelief. Because there is some... Uh, I would say wacky and goofy stuff happening, but that's a massive understatement. There is some insane shit happening in this game uh, that really kind of relies on you to just just imagine it's it's real. Just imagine. All right. Okay, we got it. Now let's see how good the rating is gonna be because I fell a couple of times but I don't think it's a big issue I still should be able to get like a double S or whatever the standard is for me <laughs> how does playing Death Stranding stop Phil's continued success now the answer is very simple uh, let me think of the answer first though I can just deposit this the answer is that we destroy Phil by playing the game that he hates and uh, I don't know enjoying it I guess and eventually he will be destroyed it's like if I played Street Fighter 5 and I was good at it but that's never gonna happen because I, I don't like fighting games how much 5% damage that's not a lot it's still all right oh the one was 12 Okay, three or more quantity there. Wasn't bad. Oh, S Legend. So it's not all that good. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, Brandon. It is legit just a delivery sim. It's very robust and uh, very, very, uh, a lot of mechanics to deliver stuff, but delivering stuff is what you do. Hey, there's a new order. Let's let's pick it up, and I want to pick up some. Uh, oh, what's it called an APC or a PCC? Yeah, level two. Let's go with this one uh, for those zip lines, because I want to make a zip line that is nice and carry on the back. Let's arrange automatically. This should be it. Uh, yeah, it is. It, you are reconnecting America. It, it's not just delivery sim, but oh, what is this? This is a special one. All right, let's do it. It's uh, it's specifically for Sam, so I'm gonna take it. Uh, you're reconnecting America, so it's not really simply just aimless and meaningless delivery. There is a lot more to it than that, but. The, the gameplay loop is delivering and we're looking at cutscenes menus are pretty hard to read at first but then you kind of uh, learn how to go through it real fast because a lot of it, it can be automatic like arranging your cargo and stuff like that that is just automatic a lot of time what do we got from 
Yo, I almost just, just fell on my ass for no reason. What do we have here? Now the terrain. Okay. It's gonna be low and then it gets high for a little bit and then we should be okay. Now there could be some BTs on the way, but there could be BTs all the time. Uh, recharge battery, I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna skip that. There is a part in the game, around the mid-game, I would say, where it, it actually gets kind of difficult for a second. Where you have to uh, manage your battery all the time, and at some points it was really tough. Getting into the mountains and getting across, doing all those... Uh, I'm gonna drop some lights on this dude. Doing all those deliveries, they're real tough. Okay. Uh, they're real tough. Oh, this is a BT right here. Hold on, okay, let's hold my breath. Because BT is... And I can kill it! There we go. Killed it. Hey, big ups, uh, Chris Legendary for, for the membership. Enjoy membership, dude. As I killed this BT. I destroyed this BT. And now it's on me, okay. I, I gotta get out of here. Because I mean, they can't get me on the bridge. But then this is kind of lame, the way that I'm just stuck here. Uh, let's shoot it a little bit. Anti-BT anti handgun. This is what I need. This is what I need. Shoot it in the BT and it gets uh, upset, I think. Yo, don't upset my baby. Get out of here. Stop messing with my baby. Alright, I mean, I think... I can at least try and figure out where they are. Maybe I can dodge them. Maybe I can even kill them. I just want to have an idea. Uh, does Jeff Bezos make a cameo? Uh, Conan O'Brien makes a cameo. What the fuck? What is happening? Oh, is the baby dying or something? I'm so confused because for a moment there I couldn't do anything. And I dropped everything again. There we go. There we go, and I might actually run out of stamina, or will I manage to shake this off? If I run out of stamina, we gotta fight a, a boss type deal. I think that's gonna be it. Yep, getting dragged. And there we go. The whale boss. Uh, holy fuck, okay. Okay, now is the time where I just get out of here immediately. Baby is crying. Uh, let's just shoot at it till it goes away. Holy fuck. And this is also a really cool thing in the game where everything turns into kind of a, a weird boss arena. When you're, when you're really bad at the game, this is what happens. Alright, I just need to go and pick up my shit, okay? And get rid of this or outrun it. Oh fuck, it's ruining my containers, man. I need to go get it. Uh, some, someone is throwing me some shit. Blood bag? Alright, sure, give it to me. Come on. Get out, stay back. And if I pick this shit up... Okay, if I pick it up, I'm gonna be moving so slow. So slow. Oh, please take it. Come on, let's get out of here. Man, this guy is so slow. Come on, Norman. Okay, let's get out of this. Oh no! This is how you don't play. Did I die? No. Can't even die in this game. This is how cool it is. This is a strand type game. 
This is it's trans type gameplay right now. This is how this trans game is played. Unfortunately, I don't even have grenades, so I'm gonna end up simply shooting at this guy until he dies. It's probably gonna take uh, a little bit more. Alright, come on, just jump out. Jump out, I got him. Probably even gonna drop uh, a bunch of crystals. He's gonna drop crystals? Oh yeah. Alright, bye bye. And Lou is not doing very well. I mean the baby. Spoilers. Uh, so, I don't even know what to do, man. I don't even know what to do. Let's just go deliver this. I think I'll manage without the baby. Because I need to get him in a... Oh, here are the crystals. Let's see how much I'm gonna get. Wow, that's a lot of crystals. And I use them for building stuff, I think, if I remember correctly. Keep picking up the crystals. Okay, let's just go in and fix up my trash, and then I'll try and uh, comfort the baby, because obviously... Not doing very well. Uh, arrange that shit. Alright. And this is how you deal with the menu, you just press automatic, and it just goes. This goes automatically. Okay, I think the baby's not gonna fix by, by getting sued, even though I don't really know how to do that. We do it from here, not from here. Not from here. I guess maybe rest? Okay, now is a nice time to take a sip. No, I can't do anything. Anyways, let's just keep going. Uh, the song in the background you can see in the corner of the screen. Uh, most of them is just uh, MF Doom instrumentals. I downloaded the whole playlist. Yeah, my guy can carry quite a lot, because I got an exoskeleton and pretty uh, decent gear. Oh, this is kind of annoying. Isn't there like a rope or something here? I need to look around, maybe somebody plays something, because this climbing, this is gonna be a pain. Oh, I think that might be something. Oh yeah, we got a ladder there. I'm gonna head that way. Okay, what we got here? This is metal, so let's pick this up. Okay. Let's grab this the proper way, climb up here, and this should kind of let me get out of here. Maybe, hopefully. If not, I, I have a ladder of my own, but I don't think I should use it yet. Actually, I will right now, because it's going to connect us to the ladder up there. So, this is actually going to be kind of... Uh, oops. It's going to be kind of meaningful and robust. You see? There's a ladder up there. And then there's another one on the top. Yeah, incorrect beans. It, it is a it is a really trippy game, and it's it's very chill at the same time. Cause there's some crazy parts in the story. You go to like the Vietnam War and shit, in World War II. There's some weird segment, but at the same time, most of the game is just chill, walking around and jumping around. And segments like the one a little while ago where I was just shooting at a whale, I was made out of ghosts. 
Um, sure. Okay, let's try and, and use the zip line. Catch my breath first. Do I have to sit? Oh, I have to sit. Can I not sit now? Okay, thanks for not sitting. Let's use the zip line and let's go home. Okay, now I should be able to get directly to the point of delivery through the zip line. Yeah, the ending I, I liked it too. I just didn't like that it took it like two hours to end. It was way too uh, drawn out. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to zip almost there, if not entirely there. It's pretty great. Okay, and I guess this is the last one. Maybe I can go there, but there's not a lot of point. Uh, maybe in like 5-10 minutes I'm gonna take a break from this, we can watch some DSP shit. Maybe some ass clicking from back in the day, cause I wanna roll a cigarette. And then we can keep going. Or maybe I can play some uh, DSP shit in, in like a little window while I'm playing this. I'll see. Just like whatever. It's a quiet chill game, I can mute it. And we can listen to DSP and I can shit talk DSP. Alright, maybe I can do one more delivery and then I'm gonna take my break. I don't sniff my fingers. Man, wings! Uh, I gotta respect his grind though. The guy is playing Elden Ring non-stop. He almost platinumed it. I think he, he might have platinumed it already. So at least he's not like DSP bitching and moaning about it. What? Somebody is calling out? Oh, never mind. It's not like DSP bitching and moaning about it. He's sitting there playing the game. Which is at least something, that's his job. I don't even know if it's his job anymore, he doesn't really like eBay. And every time I drop in a stream he got like a bunch of super chats. So I guess he's doing alright. All it's like I don't hear him talk about money all that much, maybe he does. Maybe he does. In a lot of his troll videos, even though they come out almost every day, they're kind of not a lot of content to them. Okay, this is all the content that you skip, all the dialogue. And this should be, what, 5%, 5%, 6%, 1%. Just give me the S. Alright, A. Unlocked a song. Awesome. Anything you need. A song that I can't play while I'm playing the game. Which is great. Alright, what do I get? I get Bugats, that's what I get. Uh, two new orders for Sam, this is nice, because the order for Sam are... they are special. Oh, and this one I can deliver perfectly well, maybe even at a premium. Because uh, it's at the way station, I think here I have plenty of roads and everything. Yeah, it should be alright. Let's just pick this up. Other one is urgent. I can also do this one. Uh, but I'm gonna have a truck anyway, so I can just pack both of them. This is a somewhat unusual order. Why? Do not submerge. Alright, sure. Just don't make it wet wet, and that's gonna be it, man. Yeah, Wings, I don't know. I don't know about Wings, because I haven't been keeping up with him a lot. I don't know what is happening with him recently. Uh, let's just get a truck. And uh, LTG I probably know the least about. Look in LTG. I don't know anything that he does. That's a breathable container, remember? What is this, dude? Alright. Why you gotta worry about that? 
Let's just do a speed run of this one. Okay. And I gotta deliver both of them uh, to two different places, which is not that bad. I should be able to manage uh, actually very quick. Oh, there's no highway here, huh? It actually isn't. I thought I thought I built it already. This sucks. But this sucks. But hopefully I can actually just speed through any any BTs. And there are BTs. And I just stopped in the middle of the road. It can't get it started. Okay, we got it started. Just get over this one and fall. Holy fuck, don't fall. Yo, yo, no, 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 stop it, 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 holy fuck. And more whale, more whale, more whale, it's terrible. I don't even have the the grenades, man. I wish I had them. Oh, we gotta. I didn't drop the the loot though. I didn't drop my my stuff. So if I manage to get out of this, man, the whales are coming out. I must have uh, must have sent out a begging tweet. Is this what DSP whale looks like? Let's get him. Come on. No, don't drop. No. No. No, I didn't even know you could destroy that thing I was standing on. Okay, die already. Come on. Become crystal so I can farm you. What are you? What, now we got no bullets? Now we got no bullets. He doesn't shoot me, what the fuck? Oh, okay, we got him. Got him, I just don't know why he didn't want to shoot. Fucking Kojima's fault, man. Kojima everything. Kojima did 7-Eleven, man. Alright, time to, to pack my shit and get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm gonna have my break now. I can actually pause this game. It's not like Dark Souls and shit. Let me just open the browser. We can watch them fill. Oh, what else? What else can we do but watch some fill? Just put it in the browser. Uh, we, what do we got? What do we got from him even that we can watch? Some old shit, I feel like. Because the new shit is just like sad and it's it's kind of the same thing uh let's go with the uh, dsp gaming ask the king all right this channel is retired life lessons from three months ago hold on i didn't put this on screen huh why do i gotta be such a shithead man oh uh, there we go there we go. Welcome to this new part of the stream that is apparently watching DSP while I chill. Cause, cause gaming, I'm too lazy for it. Uh, I guess I need to change the name of the stream so people don't think that I'm gaming anymore. Cause now I'm gonna roll, then I'm gonna smoke, and it's gonna take me like 45 minutes. So let's start. Uh, this. Uh, which one am I gonna watch? I don't know. Some, some old shit from what 2020 that's not old enough call of duty history 2019 rage over games another job oh yeah let's let's listen to this one now this is the ask the king from may 31st 19 2019 i'm sorry it's 2 a.m uh, subscription, subscription. Subscri and big ups subscribe, for the sub person for the sub uh bobby walker big ups 
Um, yeah, this is from 2019. And we're gonna start watching this. I'm gonna change the name from this stream to something else. And then I'm gonna do a different thumbnail and shit. But yeah. Alright, let's let's start and do this thing. Okay. Mail motherfucker. Mail motherfucker. Damn, this was loud as fuck. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, Dark Side Philip right. here. Welcome look, man, he doesn't look as melted as he does now. He still looks a little bit melty, but it's not as melted. To ask it's not the melted, a little bit just 76. melty. Nothing better than melty. 76th episode of the show, holy crap. I know, like I've done a lot 76. Today is May 31st, 2019, so we're at the very end of May. There's a lot to talk about on Ask the King. We got a lot of good questions this time around. Good variety of questions, both from forum posters as well as people on Twitter. If we have opportunity later in the show, we will also take some questions from stream chat. Um, this is kind of a hype season. We're in the midst of some good new, new game releases. We're right before E3. There's a lot of attention and hype on games and stuff right now, which is a good thing. And I'm excited for another Q&A show. Now, last time I did Ask the King two months ago... We were uncertain about the future of the show. We were wondering, does the show even have a place? Because it was like pulling teeth to get questions for the show. I'm not going to lie. It took a while to get questions for this episode, too. But All I right. think some of these questions are I quite good. The, we'll see how the, the show goes today. This. And again, we'll okay, keep playing it by year. And if you guys feel that this is a show that should continue every other month, like I've always done it, then I'll keep doing it. But if at any point you guys feel the show has gotten stale and it's something that maybe I should stop doing, then we'll stop doing it. So let's see you how it goes. stop doing it. Fair enough. All right, I got a couple quick shout-outs to start before we begin with the show. Gomanaru Merchant uh, did a 90-bit cheer and says, I noticed you had Final Fantasy IX on your dashboard the other day. Any chance you'll ever stream it? I've already explained I'm playing it this summer. When I finish with Phoenix Wright Trials of Tribulations, I'm playing that as the RPG of the summer. That's why I have it on there. But I need to finish Phoenix Wright first, which is why I've now increased the frequency on playing Phoenix Wright to two times a week. And Straight Cash Homie. Give me a $5 tip. Thank you very much. He says, Ask the King is back. I'm so hyped. Thank you, Straight Cash Homie. I appreciate that very much. Let's go ahead and get this up to... All right. Maybe if I decide to play the, the game at some point, you're going to be able to right, see guys. it in the corner. So, just a reminder. Oh, yeah. It should okay. be a multifunctional ways style you can stream. questions for Ask the King. The first, you can do Fucking it right now. King, Head over to my let's, forums on thekingofhate.com. Let's, let's skip this. There's we know how this works. Let's jump to the first question. What I could probably question. do with that kind of a thing. Um, and then well, that thing just fell apart, as you guys know. So, I, at this point, you know, I, what I do is what I do. I don't really ever foresee oh, myself... Now, the benefit of watching all these vintage type of streams is that we got the benefit of hindsight. So we can say, Phil, this didn't work out the way you thought it would. You fucking naughty naughty. Ever being able to do any of those other you things that I kind of thought I wanted to do in my life. <laughs> That's just reality, so... That's just reality. All right, so now we move on. To the forum questions. Let's we start go off forum with a question from Tynal, and he asks, "What's your thoughts <laughs> the, on the King of Kate fucking forums, uh, aka DSPGaming.com? Don't go there. I make sure to say this after every time I say DSPGaming.com. Don't go there. Here's how they improved or not. Well, as someone who grew up in the 1990s, playing Street Fighter 2 is the very first competitive fighting game ever in arcade. Hey, we're talking about Street Fighter 2 from back in the day again. A competitive player in the late 90s and early 2000s, and then you could even say a, a, a top-level pro player for a couple of years there in the mid-2000s. Um, I can tell you that fighting games have definitely changed. It's and like, in some ways I this do is the thing. I don't want to discredit him for being good at fighting games and playing them back in the day or whatever. But at some point, flexing this cloud from a long time ago becomes embarrassing. And you should kind of just stop mentioning it. That you used to play fighting games professionally a long time ago. Stop flexing with it. It's not cool anymore. I feel that for the better, and in other ways, I feel that it's for far worse. Okay, and here's what I worse. mean by that. Fighting games over time have evolved in many positive ways. Now, when a fighting game comes out, you get a wide roster of characters. You know, back in yeah, the day, the game would come out, and it would have, like, eight characters. Street Fighter 2 had eight fighters. Um, you know, future iterations had fighters that, that Yo, were kind of like, this? you know, 12 Did anybody in the game. comments put timestamps? I, I don't know if, if they do that. Subscribe, subscribe, uh, big ups for the sub. Victory of the people, subscribe, dude. Subscribe. Power to the people. Hope they win. Yo, and the romance cat guy was still commenting two years ago. Wow. Sweet. And somebody said, get a job, Phil. And got 30 likes. 
almost which is very chill here oh nice timestamps beautiful playing game boy we don't care about this business school let's go okay. let's go to business right, school next, boys and girls no chill ban no chill ban no chill ban Zero yeah, so you chill. stated in the past that you attended business school for four years at one point in your life. Are there any memorable classes, times, or experiences from your time in business school? Anything you learned during your time that you still use to this day, such as accounting or finance? As I write this, I'm five weeks away from graduating college with a bachelor's degree in business administration. I'm interested in how your time in business school went, how it impacted your life. Well, I would say, first of all, I've talked about these over the years, but let me summarize in one I mean, come on. If you go to business school and then, and then get like a million credit cards, then it obviously didn't impact you at all at all fucking business school come on question okay <laughs> how did it impact you it didn't shout out to the wasting your time in business school. i ever had in my life was actually a a, 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 a uh, religion it was a religion, oh, religion. It was about all kinds of different religions okay? was it about cults and i went i actually went to a they teach you how to mix uh, how to properly mix the kool-aid the the right ratio between uh, cyanide and kool-aid university but it was actually considered a private catholic university okay oh, and so when i went to this private, university there had actual private catholic university this is very authentic and robust this is for uh for profit he was looking for for where dsp graduated so yeah write this down profit but you probably already religion, know this unheard of in other universities they wouldn't touch that right so this religious class that I went to, they taught about all different religions, not only, you know, Christianity, but regular, you know, the, the core of it, which was based in Judaism, uh, Buddhism, um, you know, the, the, the Muslim religion. Did you say Judaism? Um, <laughs> Judaism. Um, Maybe, was, okay. The other one. The other one. Basically, they touched upon, like, every major religion. Of course. And if anything, what <laughs> This I was, by the way, he was telling you, this is my most interesting class. Most most interesting and most memorable but i don't remember what they talked about it was some religious shit i learned in that fucking course nice was that every religion almost has exactly the same core moral beliefs about what's oh, good really? and bad in life there are some disagreements but in general they all kind of agree they do and what about it's your funny religion? because they all have these figureheads that are almost exactly the same people in their religions as well who it's like you know in christianity you've got uh jesus right and then in um in uh, uh oh my god islam you got muhammad right okay you've got buddha they see they're all almost like similar figures <laughs> in each individual religion that are almost the same and Ooh, they almost like stand uh, for some even a f blast from the past when he had this uh the stuffed animal on the stream the fucking uh, what was it poison potion raisin cinnamon i'm sorry you guys it's like 2 a.m similar things there's definitely and, and i already fucking streamed this today so i don't know it, this shit is unplanned so very big core difference <laughs> it's gonna be there well, if anything when i took this course and we studied all these various religions uh you know judaism one, we sat down and looked at it and said the word with the buddha what? is the bahabi they're all very similar and why do we all hate each other for like if you're, so why do if we you hate each Islam, other? Who that's, hates that's each the, other? True religion, or you believe in Christianity? Did, does he have a view of society where people of different religions <laughs> just actively hate each other? Christianity, or or the core <laughs> of Judaism, or if you believe in Buddhism, or you believe in in Hinduism, if you believe in any of these, why do you have to think that the other one is wrong? All about why can't killism. Why can we be accepting of what we what we want to believe because and that's, what core belief system we want? Are you fucking? Are you fucking idiot? <laughs> Because it's exclusive, dumbass. If you're a member of one religion, you can't accept the other gods because you're kind of going against yours. It's just like basic one-on-one shit. Have as part of our Why life. do we invalidate the other ones? Because you don't believe in them. Five. And why can't we be more open to that? And it's actually weird because here I am in a classroom studying various religions. And if this were, you know, a thousand years ago, you know, during Inquisition times and shit, people would be killed for even thinking of studying other religions. That's how crazy our history is as humans. How crazy our mindsets have changed, how fucked up things have done over how the years. Up. If you didn't even thought about heads. talking about that other religion, we're gonna cut your balls off and shoot you up in the middle of the town square. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ, you think I'm a heretic just because I, I acknowledge that another 
fucking religion Bro, she exists. simplifies you know? stuff so here much. I am at a, at yeah, an actual... and, and then of course it's not gonna make sense. When you simplify it and you make it into this abstract idea, of course it's not gonna make sense. Of course it's not gonna make sense. If you look at it from this really basic childish perspective. Because like a child can say, why can't just people get along? Why do wars exist when everybody just wants to be happy? Why can't we just spend all the money we have on making everyone in the world happy? And this is like the childish perspective. Catholic University learning about other religions. That class opened my mind. It really did. Like, I'm well, not even like it opened my mind to the possibilities of being more accepting to other people and realizing dude, that maybe we Dude got massively scammed, by the way. I don't know in what fucking university he went, but he went to a private religious university for business. <laughs> right? Maybe I'm getting it wrong. I need to put in that huh on the soundboard. I don't have it open. Huh? I love my life. Your core religious system for your whole life may not actually be the one true thing and that you have to be more open-minded and more accepting of other people's. And I am like now, I actually huh? enjoy and and really feel like I am in, uh, enriching myself and my, my own mind of course by you learning are. about other cultures. He, he also thinks that he's enriching himself when he eats like Thai food and stuff like that, when he eats Chinese food. Man, this is so out of the box and, and innovative and creative. Other religions and other it's things, like I a, think that it's a very good thing that you should do. As you become a more mature adult, it's something that everyone should do. Immerse yourself more in mature, other cultures mature other adult. And you can learn so much about just the history of mankind, rather than just being in this all little closed foot. I, what I believe was right and everyone else was wrong, and I should only listen to this and only... I only want to know about this, you know? I, I hate that kind of believing, you know? Okay. Okay. Let's let's go on so to the next one. that's the first one. thing in university that I really felt open oh, my that's mind. The now, first you're talking thing. about let's talk business. business. Yeah. I would say a few things. I would say let's talk utilizing business. Bi software for financial purposes. So, for example, I learned Microsoft Excel, and now I don't even use Excel. I use the freebie version. Yeah, you should of it. take I even some. You should take called. some tutorials from Piece of Peace. Come on. I think like Open Office or something. So I use the same shit that I learned in high school and then university to to this day to figure out things like my finances and my taxes yes. and stuff. And it's, I didn't learn it. I don't know how I would keep track of it. Good luck keeping track of that shit with pen and paper. Like it's essential. Bro, it's really not that you hard. Those kind of skills. Bro, it's and really not that all hard. That stuff back then. This shit um, is like they teach like what 12, 13 year old kids how to use Excel. They legit do. And oh this dude is flexing. Man, I I don't know how to use Excel. I didn't know. Thank God they, they learned. I got marketing. I had a marketing class. And boy, did it open my eyes up to marketing. Because before I ever oh. took that marketing class... Why are you so terrible at marketing gullible, yourself? I believe. Why are you so bad at building a brand? Why are you so bad with your visual language? Why are you so bad with your fucking design? It's all part of marketing. Didn't pay attention in class, but it blew his mind. I bought into marketing and believed marketing. Did they say in the marketing class to shave off the goatee? It's value. And once I took that marketing class, and <laughs> they I didn't say that. Spins and pitches. But this and goatee how they is, is shit bad. To try to get you to think that it's what it's not. And have you run out? I mean, just in the 11 years I've been a content creator for the internet. Think about games like Destiny. This game isn't a game. It's an experience. It'll change the way you see games forever. It's not, what the fuck? That's not. Destiny? No. And then you play the game. You're like, what the fuck were they talking about? That was pure 101 marketing. No, but that's not even that marketing. Stuff, that's just until, like, bullshitting. About it, and then I was like, wow, now I totally see how this shit works. It's and that's just how hype. I kind of almost became more skeptical. I mean, it is marketing. When it came to it what is. people say about movies and television and a product they're selling you or a video game, you have to be more skeptical because that marketing can catch you and hook you and make you go buy something that normally you wouldn't. Okay. Um, you know, there's more. There's this more. This dude stuff is acting like you don't have a say, personal choice to do stuff and a personal opinion. General. Very my university days. I would say every year. I'm not even kidding. I went to a university for four years. Probably two courses a year had anything in them that I ever used. In general, I hate to say this. The 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 professional education system in the United States is mostly a scam. And what I mean by that is, very frankly, you, you don't use most of it. They make you buddy. go to what these the extraneous classes about? that have nothing to do with anything you're ever going to use to pay them yeah, more you got money. Scammed. Oh, you need this many credits to graduate. Yeah, but out of all the credits, only 10% had to do with a job I'm ever going to do. Why the fuck did you make me do 90% of this stupid bullshit? Because you wanted more money. You wanted me to keep paying you to go to your fucking university and class after class after class, rack up this fucking student loan debt and shit that I paid you so that you could fucking rake me over, over the coals for this tons of money, $40,000, $50,000 yep. 
you know, insane exorbitant tuition fees for what? Just train me for a job I want to fucking do. And then the hilarious part You're about all this yourself. is when Go you actually get yourself. to the job force, 95% you learn on the fly on the job. Okay. 95% of what you're ever going to do for your Why'd job, you, get you learn fired? there. You don't learn it in university. You, oh, you got laid off, you guys. You didn't get fired. And that's why when you're going to university, you got to try to get your foot in the door with a, 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 a internship or a partnership or whatever it is. You have to try to get that valuable on-the-job experience before you seek a job. Because for me, what happened was I was working almost full time. Wait, don't you get some opportunity for an internship while you're still in university in the U.S.? Because here it's like that. You at least get some chance to do something. Yeah, it's shitty and they don't pay for shit, but it's something. It's something. I went to college to pay the bills. I was paying my student loans and paying bills and responsibilities. At the same time, I was going to school. I had no time to do things like an internship or whatever. I would have loved to do it, but I couldn't do it. I had to work to pay bills. So because of that, I didn't have the opportunities. A lot of other guys, there was two or three other kids that I knew from my classes. <laughs> University of American Samoa. Shit just because yeah. they was, was this what uh, was this where Saul Goodman went to school? People who got them in the door. He, he got his law degree from from this internships and they were able to do it because their families were rich. Their families paid their free ride for college they didn't have to work their butts off to pay back their student loans and because of that they didn't have to work during college they did the internships instead and then they got these giant expensive you know high paying jobs right out of college i couldn't do that so in reality university is the first step towards getting towards that job that you want to do but it's not the end all be all you have to do all this other shit and you basically have to be lucky or rich it's that simple lucky or it rich. sucks because that's how it is in america right now you got this whole kind of a, a university system based on rob the kid of the next 20 years of livelihood with student loans so they can afford to go to a school where 95 percent of the stuff they learn has nothing to do with the job they do oh by the way just doing all that isn't even enough to get the job you also have to do all this extraneous shit outside of it like what the fuck is this and then they wonder why so many jobs in the country have gone away the valuable jobs and now most people have to hold down two three four part-time fucking jobs to make a living this is why because they set up this, this this system for us to fail here in the United States. Yeah, he could have gone to a cheaper uh, school. All right, I don't know here. what's what's with him. Because he's not even like that. Um, he's he's the type of guy that goes to school and expects teacher to teach him stuff, as if teaching is something that someone could can impose on you, and can just tell you you will now learn this and then you learn it, and then he didn't learn anything, except Excel. Apparently, he loves Vinny Excel. Vinny, uh, Riso for five months to keep it up. Phil, thank you, Vinny. Vinny, Twitch keep missionary tipped me a dollar talking about Christianity. I understand where you're coming from. I know I was raised a Christian, but I'm not going to quote that simply because that's a religious quote and we don't do that here. All right. We don't do that here. No religious quotes. DJ Bruno actually cheered. You just said, said you went to a religious Bible, school. Why not just read like a, is it a Bible verse? Um, it actually tells you that? to check into other religions. Well, I don't know about that. I certainly can't remember any quotes about that. And what I can actually tell you is when I was growing up, I was discouraged from checking out other religions because I was told growing up in Catholic school, this is the one true religion. Those other people are, are misled. It'll be your job later on in life to go out and lead those people to the true way if you can. And I'm like, okay, I'm indoctrinated. Sounds good. And then later on, I'm like, what? I actually like was listening to this. What? All right. Um, I guess so. Let's continue on, guys. So Let's what time we've done about half an hour? Yeah, we've We're done half about an half okay, an hour. Cool. Let's get to the next segment. Break. Very nice. Do I still make revenue um, on my old school okay, videos? I don't care about Jay this. Bidg. Oh yeah, this is it. What I... games have truly impacted his perception right. of games? It's gonna be um, like oh and, and that's stranded. Mr. But Jiminy no, that's some, something else. Will it really Phil as a guy who played countless games in the past decade? What are the games that truly impacted or changed your perception in gaming? That's actually a really interesting question. You know, because as I've told you this guys about my history as a gamer, I grew up in the 80s and 90s playing classic consoles like the Atari no, 7800, um, the NES, bad episode. the After Super this. Nintendo, Let's the go Sega back. Genesis. Inspiration and becoming the king. Wow. No. All right, so anyway... All right, so now we're on to the Twitter questions, everybody. Um, we start off with my name is Zwei, who asks, when dealing with heartbreak or depression, 
What was your inspiration to keep going? I know your moniker is to use the hate and fuel it for positive energy, but what did you do in the first place to recognize these positives? Um, see, for me, I'm the kind of person that, like, I really am 100% the kind of person that when I got, I get told something, you must do that, you must abide by this, you must, you, you, you know, you did that wrong, do it this way, do it right. You must justify to me that that is the case and show me the light and say, this is why, okay. And if you show me the light and I understand, okay, but there's been many, many times in my life, you're not good enough, you'll never succeed, you're doing stuff wrong, you're, you know, you're, you're gonna screw up, you're, you're bad and blah, 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 you're, you know, and when that happens, I'm the kind of person that I don't take that and put it into a ball and hold it inside and just get sad about it or upset about it and get depressed. I use that to fuel me. I get angry. I do. I legitimately get angry when that kind of stuff happens. And then I basically say, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all that shit that I just ate, you know, that I heard for so long. And I'm going to use that to fuel myself to now be successful or or get past what they told me I couldn't do. You let me tell you guys, with competitive street fighter this How did I even mute myself? They mute the alert. Anyways, big ups to the guys. I don't know if you heard me giving you a shout out, but I did. Uh he motivates himself to just continue doing the same shit and not improve. The hate doesn't improve him. It just forces him to keep doing the same shit that he's getting hate for and therefore getting more hate. This is one of the things. This is not how you handle hate. I like people told, used to tell me you're good, but you'll never be great. You're never going to win a tournament. You're never going to be top. You're never going to do any of that. You're not good enough. And the truth of the matter was when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of time to play. Like maybe once or twice a week, I would have time to go play with my friends and practice. Yeah, I was muted. And I was then muted. I would go to a tournament and I would do okay, but then I would lose. People would be like, ha ha, see, you said you're so good online and then you come here and you fail. I'm like, well, I lost because I saw three th different things here in person in the tournament that I never even come up against ever back in Connecticut where I play, you know, and I couldn't adapt on the fly. If I Maybe if I had more time to travel and more time to practice and more of that, I would have done better. But basically it was always people kind of saying, ha ha, you never, you'll never do well. And for years and years, I kind of used that as my motivation that finally in the mid 2000s, when I was independent enough to be able to do what I wanted, and finally I could travel whenever I wanted, that I traveled enough and saw enough and, and played enough to get the experience under my belt, to place at EVO, to win multiple tournaments, and to become a known person in the fighting game community. Dude. Despite the fact like there were still of tournaments people worldwide. Who, who, tournament results and everything would say, you still aren't good, here's an excuse why that, that win doesn't count, here's an excuse why this placing doesn't count, you know? I always use that as a way to motivate me. Now you're right, I could have been the kind of person that I just took that and said, I'll never win, I'm never, no matter, even when I win, I lose. Because even when I win, I still don't get mainstream recognition because people still hate on me. But I kind of didn't. Instead, I turned that into more motivation to just keep going. And that's how I was able for about a three of year course. span. I was Being one of the top players in the country in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. No matter what version was out there, whether it was PS1 bro, or, or Xbox that's 360. The thing. That's the thing. I can't call him out on this because I don't know shit. But is Street Fighter 2 Turbo that popular of a game to have this cloud on it man i was the best at at this thing that i i would say is kind of obscure because it's street fighter 2 turbo it's like a weird thing it sounds weird i don't know it might be a super popular game or ps2 or whatever version of the game you want to talk about i was tops at those games for about three plus years because of that motivation that i gave myself okay um today in the modern era, when you're talking about my YouTube and now my Twitch streaming presence, are you kidding me? You know how many people out there are against me? You know how many people have made a meme and a virally popular thing to a hate meme. on DSP? And a make virally DSP? popular thing. But I'm Why still though? here. I didn't fucking go anywhere, right? I seriously, I'm still here. I still have a following. People still tell me on a daily but basis. You have that a following because of those people. So all those years that people told me you're doing it wrong and this and that, and you Bro, suck, so and you should just go away. And, you know, and then people just literally making shit up about me, insulting me. I could have given up, but instead, again, I use that. I say, if I give up, if today I quit and I say, you know, this is it. I can't take it anymore. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to up up update total tips, didn't I? Oh, no, I did. I did. Never mind. I did. Never mind. Um, update it again. And I said, I throw it in the towel. I can't do it anymore. It's too much harassment. It's too much stress or whatever. 
Um, I honestly feel that basically I yeah EA one, do have a basketball I'm game. This the is right. This is and number two, I'm letting down all those people who over these years have come out and supported me in droves and so much support and strength and everything. You know what I mean? Like, I need to, I use the positives that I have <clears throat> as motivation from all the negative assholes who say I can't succeed to still be here. Because I don't, I, I would never want it to say, well, if you guys finally got me off the internet you got me to quit you fucked with but hold on it's not about winning it's not about winning sometimes you should hear what those toxic shitheads say because sometimes they say don't burp into the microphone don't fucking lean in and snort into the microphone if you can't help but if you can't help yourself but snort then you can lean away you can just look the other way and then snort and try and do it subtly but no it has to be aggressive and it has to be to annoy people or at least it's become this thing that is borderline intentional with me so hard that i'm out of here i can't take it anymore i, I don't ever want to get to that point i want it to be that the day when i decide i don't want to do gameplay streaming and stuff like this anymore it's my active decision for various intelligent reasons it's not I throw in the towel because there's so much negativity and harassment thrown my way that I can't take it anymore. Um, but I do, I seriously feel like this whole journey, this over 10 year journey has been such a crazy thing and that I need to keep going. I need to, despite all odds, despite financial issues, despite trolling and, and actual legitimate harassment against me on a daily basis, I need to just keep fighting and keep going because it inspires keep fighting people. the good fight people of have gameplay. legitimately told me over the years i inspire them because of all the shit that i've been i can get through the shit that i've been through they can get through the shit that they're going but bro through. you're not okay. even like getting through the shit you're getting people to get you through the shit because the shit that he encounters is is fucking money related because he gets trolled because he begs for money all the time and he makes his his private emergencies and his fundraisers a public matter and that's why people shit on him and he continues to do it and people people get him through this it's not he that gets him through this because this is always money so that's what i need to do you know that's just what i need to do i need to to focus and keep keep the course and where what i gotta do i gotta keep going you know um and that's kind of what i use as my motivation my name is way you know like despite the fact that there's all these negatives i still try to say there's still tons of positives I never would have met Cat and been with Cat if it weren't for the yeah, shit that I've been Yeah, we're talking about Cat right now. Um, that's, that's great. You know, there's a lot of positive things that come out of all the negatives, so. Yeah, shout all out right, to Cat. Uh, dope so cheers. Never Did met you know Cat. Ninja was a pro Halo player before Fortnite? He actually averaged thousands of viewers as well. Uh, I knew that he had a following before uh, Fortnite, absolutely. But I knew that he never really broke out. He never become, became the popular guy. He was just known as one of those guys that does that kind of stuff. And then when Fortnite came out, boom, he exploded. So, uh, Forearm Joker, 14... I don't even know what the hell that means. Oh, wait, 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 14 what? With the king? Well, 14 why don't I what? With the king? No, I, really I don't know what that times. means. Was it a 1488? No. Okay, let's continue. I think it was a... Uh, I think it was... All right, the next question is from This Heat Inside. They ask, what would it take uh, for you to try I do to like the NBA, but I'm terrible at this game. Especially right now. Not even paying attention. I'm just playing mechanically for no reason. What would it take for you to try and compete at a just professional level away. again? Obviously, he's talking about Street Fighter. Nothing. Um, Nothing. Quite frankly, Nothing. it would take two factors. Number one, um, a game that I actually like. And I'm serious. Like, like Street Fighter V, if it was a game that I absolutely loved... And I felt was a competitive game up to snuff with games that I played in the past, and I, and I wanted to keep playing it at a competitive level. I might have sought to do it, but I the recent Street Fighter games that have come out just aren't good enough for me to dedicate the amount of time and dedication and money and everything that it would take for me to get to a pro level. I'm just being honest here. I don't like them that much. Street Fighter Four was a great game, but still, it just didn't have that meh. That would Street Fighter me Six toward, is going to you know, be a thing hard. with VSP. He's like going to hate Turbo. it. And or because when it, it's gonna come out in like what in next year, maybe in two years, I guess, but maybe next year, maybe they just announced. I don't know what the teaser was about because I know there was a teaser about it, but yeah, he's gonna complain so much. 
and it's gonna be bad again street fighter 6 the worst game i've ever played is there gonna be a million view video about it probably probably elements and and i liked it and it was a good competitive game that everyone was hyped for and everything i would probably go crazy playing it but i haven't seen i haven't seen that game yet i haven't like don't get me wrong i'm still a big fan of fighting games but I just i haven't got that not a one single release since i've done this on youtube have given me that competitive bug to try to play it at a high level again okay the only two games really the marvelous capcom series marvel capcom one and two not three i thought three was a broken mess one and two and super turbo are the games that really give me that itch and that bug to want to play at a competitive level again Okay. Now the other factor is, is you can it would have go to be something to that's and, actually and realistic. And what I mean by that is to be at a pro level at a fighting game, you have to play the shit out of it. Not oh, Phil plays it once a week or twice a week, and now he's expected to be at a pro level. I'd be playing that shit like every day. Like it would be my daytime streams of one game and my night stream every night is Street Fighter. You see what I mean? It would have to be yeah, that. I don't way. think Jack and I know that would turn can, off a can show up every night. Of my audience. I would have to find a way <laughs> yeah. to inspire a viewer base to come in and inspire watch me. Inspire viewer base. Play he needs to build a new, a new viewer nauseum base to get good enough at them because that's how you do it. That's literally what you have to sacrifice in order to get good. And I would be throwing away a lot. You know, over these ten years, I've been a content creator. Over two years, I've been a full-time streamer. Um. I've changed up everything to be variety, Mr. Variety. Mr. I don't just variety. Play one kind of game. I play one kind of game on my first stream, totally different game on my second stream. So that way I'm never only being a one trick pony or doing one thing. If I was gonna be a pro fighting game player, I very much would have to kind of become a one trick pony again. Okay? And I don't really want to do that. I've been there and done that for most of my life when I was a late a teenager, all the way through when I was like, you know, 10 years ago. I was all Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter. And now that I've reimbursed myself in gaming culture, um I don't know how I much like, it helps I like that in being better. a being a variety streamer, how much it helps and how much it hurts. Because for him basically it means it, it's a mess when it comes to the schedule and all, all that nonsense. And you see him encounter issues with uh being backlogged like he was talking about right now like because right now he has too many games to play and sometimes there's not enough games and then he's just like kind of jack of all trades but master of none because it's like he doesn't play anything particularly well and even the fighting game streams they're so boring the street fighter what was it friday night smackdown or whatever nonsense friday night fights it's just like so boring every time it's just the same thing the same opponents, the same gameplay, the same tips gets the same pay pigs. It's just like watching the same stream over and over again. The same excuses. I like the mainstream game. Hey, what's up, uh, Super Zelda? I enjoy that more than today for the a super late stream. Of competitive Double stream, stream actually. Um, I didn't so even think I would watch the SP this time. A combination of factors. A game that I uh, like so more. much that I actually love it and want to play it at a high level. Plus balancing that in with the fact that i also would want to sacrifice all this stuff that i've built for 10 years in order to do it realistically would it actually happen i don't know man oh and he does of course of course he does um the weird thing where he of course meanders too much and it takes him too long to get through a game even those short games even like games like mlb shit like that man it's just so tedious and when you're a variety guy, you kind of have to get shit out of the way and just play it and get the best of your time. And get the most out of uh, your fucking content. Um, Dope Soap cheered. He says, you said he wouldn't exist if not for Fortnite. I know you don't like... All right, Dope Soap, stop. I'm just going to stop with you. Stop you right yeah, he's here. Trying to, you don't know what the hell he's talking about. He's trying to trigger a discussion. he wouldn't exist at all without Fortnite. I said he was a guy who streamed and was struggling trying to make it. And then because of Fortnite, that's why he blew up. I and that's keep a... 1 million percent true. Go ahead and try to spin it however you want. Spin to be a negative jerk. Want. That's not what I I'm not going to go look it up. All right. To prove DSP um, wrong in the past like 2019 or something joe blows flamoni all right took me a dollar and says i should redo smart guys with derek no i'm not gonna do that um <clears throat> wait what and would derek Duck 9, just, just switch cat with months. derek 
Yes, 30 <laughs> months. Is that what he yeah. said? And he says, just finished watching the Walking Dead gameplay. He's talking about the conclusion of the Walking Dead that I did a couple nights ago. He says, damn, the lack of manpower really showed. You can see that they did a quick filler for parts of the story just to get the game done and out. Yes, they did. I was incredibly disappointed with how they ended Clementine's story. It was very poorly written. And even though I'm happy that it had an ending, the ending was incredibly disappointing. All right, continuing on. Rip, this was a very quick question. The Real Morrow. Let's uh, asks, go. What's how do you the think the backlash thing? from Fallout 76 uh, We don't will care. How did I become the king of hate? This is next the actual question. Is question. From Fantastic Max. He says, when was the point at which you became the king of hate? Um, It was the early 2000s. All right. And... What is this, 2001? Uh, 2002? I was trying to make a name for myself. After 9-11. Fighting game community. <laughs> it was the very first time... She became the king of hate after 9-11. It motivated him. <laughs> Were you hating on DSP? Uh, you know. The fighting game community kind you of know. became global because of Shoryuken.com was a very hotbed at that time. Shoryuken.com forums was like. And he was trolling on the forums. Fighting games and post up about your local tournament. In the early like 2000s. That, that was fun as fuck. Exist anymore. Um, that is fun. But yeah, like it was the, the, the thing, the hot thing. And at that time, I had made my name D DSP or Darkseid Phil and I talked a ton of shit. A ton of shit to everyone i was one of the most prominent shit talkers in the entire community one of the and most so, prominent shit talkers that being said, a lot also of known like as i was one of the, the most prominent I would do good i wouldn't person win, people didn't I like pretty good and people actually did acknowledge those who actually played against me would acknowledge that i did actually have uh some skill okay um but yeah people were being you know pretty n nasty to me at that time and didn't like me and I basically said I would use that hate to motivate me to do success, okay? And it was funny because at the time, there was a website that was made by only a small inclusive group of West Coast gamers. Okay. And they called themselves the Top Players. The top and they made players. Like topplayers.com. Yeah, and then he made tophaters.com. They went out of their way, not even like the top tournament players, just people who were maybe like like 10 people on the west coast who thought they were some of the best players in the country so they made a website called topplayers.com that had their names and profiles and stuff of shit that they did and they would try to post up videos and stuff keep in mind the early 2000s there was no youtube so it was very primitive and all websites looked like shit or whatever so yeah. i went out there and i said oh what you guys think you're to the top alive. players huh well, guess what? I made a parody website called tophaters.com. What this what website a great did was troll. completely ripped them a new asshole and made fun. It was a complete Whoa. parody spin what a of what cool they troll. were doing. And then I added in <laughs> articles about cosplay and stuff that were really ridiculous and over the top. Um, and it ended up becoming way more I, popular I wish I can than find the top this. players' Maybe I website. Can find this. Like I was getting tons of hits Hold and on. views. Everyone was checking out my site, and it just it was hilarious because now they hated my guts that I would do Up that. Haters. Right? Um. But that was it. Like I, I found it that on time, Reddit. I basically became oh, the yeah, guy. Oh yeah, it's a the web community. archive. Let's see it. Hey, I found it. Oh, it's on the Wayback Machine, but we can find it. Here it is. Wow, TopHaters.com. I think maybe I've even been here before. We have the Hate Army logo. We have the <laughs> the Hate Army logo. Click here to be recruited. Wow, very exciting. What are we getting recruited for? News archive. What is on the archive? 2004, The Punisher. Who the fuck is this? If you do not want to read spoilers, do not read any further. This is Kill Bill 2. What is this? The DSP write all of this? Is this movie reviews? Yeah, it's movie reviews. And of course the images are missing because they, they didn't get archived, but this is all the text and it's like legit just like reviews of stuff tophaters.com well it's very exciting i know that uh web comic web comic wow did dsp do web comics hulk movie review but dsp didn't do that oh yeah it is hulk movie review by dsp hulk hate movie too many words make Hulk look like sissy and only get 15 minutes of screen time. Look like sissy, by the way. Yeah, but Jennifer Connelly is a hottie. You have a point. Besides, you suck at Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You didn't even deserve a movie. 
And then there's a last panel that says Hulk smash puny human. Huh? This is That's huh? retarded. This is fucking ridiculous, bro. What else we got? We got forums. Oh yeah, we got login, register. What the fuck is this? Man. Impact. What is this? Oh, this fighting game championships. I thought they were talking about like wrestling. <laughs> uh what else we got evo 2k3 editorials and this is all dsp shit you are all mindless why wc3 war counter-strike and warcraft 3 suck what the fuck is this is this just articles 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 and this guy is shitting on kiwi farm oh there we got media what is in the media it probably didn't get archived Cater cam candid interviews. Fuck the cannons joke videos. Okay, I don't know any of this shit. Dave Chappelle's R. Kelly parody videos. P on you and P on you remix. Where does this go? What is this link? I'm kind of disturbed right now. Oh no, and we couldn't find it. But it's um it's a little bit press X to be confused, man. I'm very confused. Huh? Ah, uh, that makes me cringe, I guess. <laughs> well, okay, this is it. You can probably find it on Google. Just look up DSP top haters and you're going to find it. Who would be a very so This is the side that he's talking about. Guy. This amazing trolling site. It's just like nonsense. About it's just a Christian website basically. Minus the minus Sonichu. Thing. If someone was being an asshole, I would call them out. Have if the com did something <laughs> underhanded at Evo, I would call them out. And so I came, I became the, the big mouth of the community at the time. Um, and some people loved me for it, and a lot of people hated me for it. So, like I said, I would say I would take that hate that all of you have, and I will spin it into into motivation, so that when I actually go to a tournament and I play, I can actually win. So yes, I at one point I acted like a troll, absolutely. At one point, I acted like a troll when I was but young, now much I've younger. Learned. I mean, yeah, I was much younger. Was when I was like that, you know. And then oh, about so the mid twenties, like I wised up. I said, I don't want to be like that anymore. I'd rather. Okay. I would rather stop so being the probably jerk. Probably next year, I'm gonna stop making shit on the screen. Drama, and instead be the guy who <laughs> toughs out up. through the drama and perseveres and becomes kind of a figurehead. And I did for a while around the mid two thousands. I was a figurehead in the Street Fighter community on the East Coast. A lot it of people a trusted me head. to be an authority on games like Super Turbo. I ran major a, what tournaments is a, like the East Coast. What is a figurehead, DSP? I'm not sure you're using it properly. Figurehead. Maybe he is. Uh, oh yeah, uh, a nominal leader or head without real power though. That's what it says. It says without real power. A person who is head of a group, but actually has no real authority or responsibility. Why am I being European and calling your stupid ass out? Why? Why? On your misuse of fucking words. But he was basically this, because he actually had no real authority or responsibility. So he was a fake king. A fake king. And he's bragging about it. Hey, what's up, uh, Ace well Man? Many other smaller tournaments How's in the New York, man? Connecticut, Glad you're enjoying the streams. Area. Um and became well known as a well-respected figure on the east coast for about three four years there figure ahead of chill okay um of a pillar of the community he was a chiller of the community says, let's talk books except what nobody like him books that you've read throughout your life have you read books like the outsiders and lord of the fly oh, it's a, uh, um, oh yeah i absolutely Green. did um i absolutely did uh read a lot of the classic books that you would probably know of, like the lord of the flies okay um, hook finn lord of the rings Sawyer, um, all, you know, all those classic you know, books that you have oh. to read in school, I've run, read. But for me, the books that I really liked when I was a kid, I liked books from a guy named Brian Jacques, who made a series of books called the uh. Red Wall series. Um, <clears throat> I, I need to change the name of the stream the again, because I'm not even playing Dead Stranding anymore. Animals what the that fuck? were basically humans. They were anthropomorphic just animals. Just people. And they lived in Britain, and they had like a they're all They're all here for Death Stranding gameplay, and I'm just playing basketball. Badly. I'm still winning, dude. Come on. It's all about the win. I don't even know what's happening on the screen. Where they all had different roles. There was bakers. There were soldiers who defended. There was people in government. Um, 
and then there were castles and stuff. It was crazy. It was like a fan. It was like Game of Thrones with animals, because animals would die and be brutally murdered and stuff. It was pretty crazy. Um, so I really liked that series when I was a kid. Then when I started getting older, I liked Michael Crichton books a lot. Uh, then I liked Dan Brown. I have some of his stuff. Oh um, no, Dan and of Brown, course, get I, out of George here. George R. R. Martin. I get fucking started reading Game of Thrones. Oh, but you started. I haven't yeah. read anything. And in of a course, years. man. Of course, George R. R. Martin. Man. Okay. I started reading it. And the last fucking real Dan question Brown. that we have here is from. How the hell do you say that name? Utzedi Butzi. Anyway, they ask Neo or Sekiro. Hey, big up to everybody in chat that said Neo. I like the combat engine of, of Neo way more than Sekiro. Here's why. Neo why? is based on oh, standard wait. combat. Why? Okay. why am I listening to this? We're skipping this. This has timestamps. Books. Oh, he gave this guy actually less less than a minute of, of an actual response for the books when he had to talk about books. Less than a minute. Uh, what do we got here? Rage over games, inspiration, the future and goals. This is gonna be an ironic one. Probably I've watched it, but who cares? Oh no, this is so fucking loud. I hate this DSP. How do you manage to be obnoxious in every single way possible? Uh, all right. Well, I still stream even if the worst case scenario happens. And the first question, it's three questions from Nick. Uh, patron questions, so we're gonna go ahead and answer his questions first, all right? So number one, his first question is, regardless of what might happen to me in April, even if it's the worst case scenario- He's we're gonna die in April. Well, he was acting like scenario, he had like a life-saving like surgery in April. And it like maybe sent like to the Middle East and I'm ransomed by ISIS or something. Um, so if that's the case, no, I would not be able to still, oh no, chestnut fell. I still would not be able to make streams or videos because I would be, you know, being held against my will. And unless they have, how are you so you funny? Know, really internet over there, which I don't think they even have oh. in their caves or whatever. At least uh, I don't me. think that I would be able to perform any kind of stream or video. And this is all, all right. just like a meme um, response. Now okay. I think what Nick is actually referencing. I'm obviously being facetious here. What he's yeah, referencing is your right now. I'm in a big financial dilemma. Yeah. Um, I need to Remember? raise a lot of money between now and money. the end of April. What was it? Sixteen k. Taxes for the year. It was sixteen k, right? I know I'm going to be getting a large. And then sum he of got money secretly married. In February because of that person, Emerald Seven, who gifted Shout some thirteen hundred plus subscriptions over the course of December. So I'm going to get a lot of money from him, but it's not enough to pay all the taxes. In fact, I would guess it's maybe half, if that. So I need to raise yeah, a lot the, of the excess Emerald funds between Seven shit now was wild. and the end of April. That storyline was really, really crazy because the dude just came here and dropped so many subs. The DSP was like the most sub two, like tier three sub guy on the planet. That's how many fucking subs this guy bought. Legit changed his life. <clears throat> in order to pay these taxes. But he's still snorting. Worst case scenario, if I can't. Stroke. I could see a few things happening. Number one, I get a lien on my house, which would absolutely suck. But that means is if I were to try to refinance my that house, which I suck, want to yeah. do, or if I would try to sell my house, that the government would have to get paid first for the taxes that I owe. That's number one. That's terrible. That would be really bad. In fact, a lot of companies, for example, you know, a company that I was trying to work with to refinance my home might not even want to refinance this. I, we don't want to touch that. We don't want to mess with tax liens. All right. I'm going to have to go around and find a company that's willing to deal with that. Number two. The IRS might just say, well, we're going to put Lean you on a in manual on a for closure. Yeah, pay. it's going to be one of and those. Don't... Oh, by the way, we can uh, one of these type of streams. When I do like a midnight late stream, we can play. Um, what was it? Fucking a Jackbox. That's going to be fun because I have a couple of them and we can play like Quiplash and shit like that. We're going to do even worse. We're going to hit you with even more fees. We're going to hit you with crazy amounts of penalties to the point where we'll take all your money away. All right. Um, obviously that's bad. If they force me on a payment plan like that, um, I don't know where the money's coming from because I barely make enough money right now to pay everything as it is. So now they're expecting additional money from me every month. I don't know where the hell it's going to come from. You see what I mean? Um, would I still make streams and videos? Yeah, this is my life. This is my job. This is my income. The bottom line is it's not that I don't make good income doing this. It's that because of all these factors over the last few years that have screwed me over, including just a few... The trolls who screwed with my channels and stuff. Okay, number me, one is trolls. Not viable anymore for, as a business and making me lose tons of income that way. Number two um, is probably lag. My former tax attorney who completely screwed oh, no, me it's over. Oh, taxes. And 
didn't do my taxes properly, which resulted in thousands of dollars of back state taxes and thousands of dollars in penalties and fees. And then on top of all that, thousands of dollars of me paying a new tax attorney to clean up the mess. All right. All that money would have went towards my normal taxes and instead I had to go to all this shit that was fucked up. Um, amidst other things, for example, as you guys know, last year, other things happened with YouTube where for about a month I didn't have any ad revenue on YouTube. That screwed me over. Um... The fact that I changed my videos on YouTube to be longer, which then also reduced my ad revenue. Okay. Um, the what fact else? that people like Tutankhamen came in and basically Bro, how made are you so fucked in so many ways? How are you a simple gameplay streamer and managed to get fucked over in so many ways? Everything is so bizarre about this guy. This is why he's so interesting. He is so fucking bizarre. How do you manage to put yourself in this situation? Well, you'd only simply play games. That's all he does, allegedly, if you listen to him. He just chills, relaxes, and is a peaceful, nice, great presence in a world of chaos. And then what happens is everybody fucks with him. How does it work? How? It, it just makes me go like, huh? For like two months on my stream, huh? Which wasn't good. Um, and then and I, the best thing is what happens after the huh is is even cooler. Listen to this. Huh? How does that make any sense? How? How are you going to tell me that people can do completely illegal things and be fucking rewarded for it? This is insane. This is <laughs> this is toxic. insane. This, this is insane. This is toxic. I'm saying that shit year, on typically the end of the year that last week. I do holiday events and I raise a ton of extra money to help with this this early year. And I didn't, I raised none because I wasn't there. I was sick. So all that extra funds, usually it's none awesome, for fun. thousands of dollars that I usually raise at the end of the year. I didn't make any of that. Oh, that sucks. Also, for the first time ever this year, during the holiday season, I made no additional money on YouTube. Typically during the holiday season, I make way more money because if there's big ad revenue increase, I made exactly the same amount during the holiday season as I normally did on YouTube. So again, so many factors coming in and they all have negatively affected me to the point where I can barely afford to even pay what I owe every month. Where's extra money going to come from to pay these taxes? I have no idea. But the bottom line and is some pay pig. I'm still like going to always I'm does. Still gonna make videos. The worst case scenario would be if there's just no way out and I have to sell my house okay. to pay everything. This is not that obviously bad. If I'm in the midst of selling my house. No, I wouldn't be able to do it. This is not that bad at all. I don't know why. I don't know why is this ego trip has to be a thing every time with with this house. Just give it up. Just give it up. It's a long term. It's a massively positive decision. Give it up. Move into something affordable. That is just like a chill little apartment. And I, I know DSP is not used to that. He, he can never live that. To prepare the house but for sale, on. to pack up a bunch of shit and sell a lot of the shit out of the house. Working with a real estate agent constantly, having people come in and see the house. You see what I mean? Like. It's going to be very different. It's going to very, very, very negatively affect the streams. Just being honest yeah, of here. Course. Um, and I the know DSP, that people would be very upset. DSP needs specifically to have this, this house to be able to stream the way he does. Anything less than what he has currently is going to ruin the quality of the streams. At the chain. Because he has a little bit of soundproofing foam on the wall. That's exactly why. Because of the foam. The negative changes plus if i have to sell this house and move wherever i go is the internet going to be as good where, where i go, go? your they... internet is still not good your internet is still not good you know, allow me to stream the way i do or they it's gonna not good noise? you see what i mean like i don't yeah today is a double stream apparently i just had nothing to do and it's late at night so it's it's a double feature no it's a big factor that i the ideally the best case scenario i find a way to pay these taxes or most of the taxes by the end of april even if i can't do all of them if there's a few thousand dollars left over that's manageable versus if there's tons like ten thousand or more dollars owed i'm completely screwed all right Ooh, that was um, a long bit uh, cheer that he got no, it is what it is a um, long we'll cheer moving forward but yes i would still kill, still keep streaming and making videos as much as possible because guess what that's my livelihood that'd be like saying yeah well things are going wrong are you just gonna stop working now yeah yeah because when you don't have enough money to pay stuff if you stop working it fixes it huh um, his next question is, if you had the option of, now, of training I, I, a stable... Okay, let's have a little bit of a segment that's called, uh, let's fix DSP's situation right now. Not right now, but in, in sort of short term. So first, first step is start listening to all criticism on streams. And I mean like all, all of the shit. 
and and cut the the excuses and i'm not actually talking about dsp in this case i'm talking about a person in his place who is kind of like dsp but not dsp because dsp can't implement my my advice i guess uh so first start taking all that criticism make your thumbnails nice get the fucking green screen get a nice cam and you can still be toxic that's the thing you just need to up the production value so you can actually manage to pull random people off of the internet to just come and check you out all right go on some random site buy some layouts for like 20 bucks and some animations and shit uh go learn how to edit a simple video like a simple as fuck video with like cuts and and stuff and make some highlights or something make some shorts stuff like that and that doesn't take a long time to do you can do that in an hour every night and eventually within a month you're gonna be much better than than what you got right now and you're actually gonna learn something well job that would support you would you take it but still continue to do YouTube and Twitch as a hobby for side revenue? Or would you rather continue to do this full time and constantly struggle to make ends meet? It depends because here's the thing. And it's just with the stream situation because after the stream situation, he got also the possibility of getting some new skills to be able to actually work a job eventually. So that's a thing. You say getting a stable job that could support you. Any stable so job. Let's say on his day off, as much as he doesn't want to do it, he can get and maybe do some freelance stuff. He can do voiceovers, I guess, for some people for like cheap and make some like cash, I guess. Uh, but we're not considering in this case the spending on alcohol and the spending on champions because that's unreasonable for any person. So we're not considering it while giving him advice support me but no stable job would make as much money as i do on stream and that's just me being honest being on stream here is more profitable than having a nine to five job period at least from yeah but while level. you're on stream and you're profiting it, behind the scenes you can get better it's like grinding off of stream right it's exactly that it's exactly that but in real life so when you're not on stream you grind in your skills and stuff like that and then when you're on stream you still get your money but eventually when you grind off stream, your skills are going to start reflecting on your stream. So he's naturally going to start having a better stream if he grinds off the stream. And by grinding, I mean like, I don't know, learning some stuff, learning anything, anything. Sure, if I if I had been in the job market for the last but 10 no, years. There's so many excuses behind of it. It's just like walls upon walls upon walls of excuses. There's no way to get to him and actually motivate him to do something. And because was, he is just right. He is always right. Was entering in a management position or something, then perhaps getting a job and and jumping in like this. Would and have of made course, he wants to streaming, he wants no. to cut the grind and enter at a management position, so you can skip the whole grinding segment. Well, that's not how jobs work, DSP. Nobody's gonna give you a job like this with zero experience like this with a guy who just snorts and burps and has a terrible reputation. Come on. Even if he had the experience, he still wouldn't get it with the reputation he's got of being just a, a miserable fucking douchebag. No, there's no way. That he wants a management position. And getting a nine to five office job is going to pay as much money as what I do here on stream. Therefore, there's but, no point. You see what I mean? That's the I issue. Do, Phil, that's the issue that nothing will make this money. So he's going to be locked into doing this indefinitely. Which means he needs to motivate PayPigs to keep paying up. As his views dry up, so this means the ad revenue gets cut and, and PayPigs leave and new dramas happen and he has random fucking lashing out at viewers and all this shit. Because it's not even like we're talking about a normal guy trying to retain a viewer base by just doing content and pleasing his viewers. We're talking about DSP. So he's in a really, really tough position. Really tough. Because it would actually hurt me. Actually, stopping doing this full time to go get another job would make less money. So it would actually put me in a worse financial position. Why the hell would I do that? You see what I mean? Um. Oh, uh, and then the third question. If oh, I definitely think. I definitely think if he's willing to grind, he doesn't need to go out and, and get an actual physical job and do stuff. He could work from home, doing a variety of stuff he could work at like a call center or whatever remotely and just talk to people all day since he fucking talks all day anyways 
might as well do it for like getting paid and in work experience but he's not willing to do that and he never will be willing to do that because that's beneath him when you had a choice for an alternate career what would it be i have no idea no because idea. every job i've ever been nothing in, because he also never... has no passion what does he have passion for video games guess who has passion for video games almost everybody who plays video games because video games are meant to be fucking fun and enjoyable obviously you're gonna tend to have a passion for video games because they're fun like people having passion for movies and music because they're fun to do and he has no other interests or anything which would motivate him to start a career in that field Never really amounted yeah, to maybe anything. eating you know, food I've maybe been in the fast food industry and the fast food in industry. service job industry i've been in the retail industry i've worked at a nine to five office job in customer support and also continuous improvement and every single one of those jobs were completely fruitless and even though i busted my ass at them and really felt that you know i worked my butt off and earned respect and credit in fact at my office job i received received commendations and awards for going above and beyond i still got laid off of course so you gave him like a, no job a mickey mouse award <laughs> the mickey mouse award for uh i don't know clean as desk or some shit like that some weird shit it's just whatever take this diploma or certificate of putting in effort bill burnell where you're guaranteed like a piece of here's a peace of mind or job security it doesn't exist it literally what does do not exist, doesn't exist the only people who can feel job secure are people who like are 100 uh, required in order for something to happen like for example doctors bro come on Most this dude doesn't he doesn't understand the idea of doing something and getting better at it and therefore getting more security and possibilities so if you're a guy who works you work and you get better at your job so eventually when you're really good at your job you have more opportunities to work elsewhere for more money or work at the same place for more money and have ability no, he doesn't actually know the idea of getting better at what you do because he really never has got better at what he does All, always just worse because he always could edit videos in the most like raw bare bones way always and now he's just like completely declined to that too it's probably job secure once you have an established practice do any, people any are always going to need health care but you know yeah I mean? apparently yeah doctors are the only people with job security but for someone like me there's no job i'm ever going to jump into in my life that's going to have job security you know what i mean well so not for you this, yeah what, what i do i have no idea i like i said the one thing that i always imagined i would like to do is open a because restaurant look, uh in the alternative universe dsp would realize that what he calls selling out is actually creating a network of people that you know within the industry and making a spot for yourself in the industry itself and what he did was burn all the bridges because he didn't want to quote unquote sell out because he's quote unquote real even though people don't like him in the first place and they don't even want to give him all these opportunities and they're better people than him to get the opportunities but for him it's not wanting to sell out and that's his his explanation but no in reality he just failed to get in the industry while it was getting started and now there's just too much competition he can't do anything can't do anything is not even trying and have it have like recipes for my family like my own, own italian sauce and we can make our own recipe of pizza and we can do all this cool italian style stuff but by the I'll way that the, the now, kitchen you know nightmares reference is pretty appropriate if you watch pretty much any any episode you're gonna see how it would turn out because a lot of those owners are pretty narcissistic and of course they all think their food is great and their service is great and everything is clean and fresh and then gordon ramsay comes there and and uh, confronts them and then it's really interesting when when you confront the narcissist is uh it gets very entertaining but i mean like unless i win the lotto I would never be able to have enough money to open up a I'm restaurant and restaurants actually the are some of the most risky and most failed ventures ever in business yeah you can't get a restaurant man you don't open. actually care about pleasing people you can't run a restaurant and and not wanting people to be satisfied because he doesn't do the gameplay shit for people to be satisfied he does it all for him and you can't open up a restaurant for you a, a place that's supposed to make people satisfied and give them service you can't do that no, and, and of course he's gonna fact, fail in the last two years here in washington state i've seen like sandwich shop open close within a year um 
there was another one. There was a, a Chinese restaurant open closed within a year. Um, it's just it's fickle. It's a very fickle place. Um, and even though I think I would love doing it, it would be very hard, very hard to be successful. You know what I mean? So, is what it is. Um, I'm probably going to be doing this for for much more longer time. All right. So yeah. before we get into the four that's, questions, that's basically the the closing point to this uh, to this question. What do we have? Why do I stop doing game reviews? Music. Let's talk about music. What are goals? Uh, yeah, let's do this. Goals. Goals for 2019, I guess. Bills coming up, so thank you for that. Um, it goes for the bills. All right, continuing on. The next question is from Tynal. He says, what are your goals for 2019? Okay, all right. So I have many goals for 2019 many goals Allow me to explain engagement stream, likes number one i want to continue to put out entertaining and fun streams on a daily basis for all of you okay and what i hope is that that's accomplished this year because it did happen somewhat in 2018 but still not completely this year i get a viewer base that actually doesn't care what i'm playing that you guys feel that no matter what kind of a game that i'm playing you could still come by and have a good time with okay. me okay so Whether consistent pay pigs so consistent pay pigs a, so it's not people like Jax Rax or that only show up for uh, Street Fighter. Retro classic. Sound good. A game that I'm replaying from my past or an ongoing chill stream kind of vibe with games like chill Minecraft stream. and stuff like that. Man, I'm the hoping... chill streams. The chill streams. One of my chillest stream moments of those streams was when he caught his fucking mod unbanning somebody and decided to confront him live on the stream and embarrass him in front of everybody and ban him eventually. It was a very fucking weird power trip. Very weird. That no matter what I play, you feel like you can come by. Oh yeah, that's that's a good, good point. This was three years ago. He really looks incredibly melted nowadays. If I had to put it like a side-by-side -side comparison, it's crazy. Entertainment. Because the thing is... It's, it's actually past... really, really impressive how much different he looks now. It was never like that. Back when, you know, I was doing YouTube and stuff, it was more like Phil has to entertain a certain group. And if he doesn't entertain that one group with a certain kind of content that they're looking for, then sadly he can't make ends meet. And, you know, he has to move on. You know, there were other games, there were games in the past that I would have loved to play. And I felt like I had to drop them because I didn't think that I could, I could go through with them. If anything, 2018 showed me the opposite. When I was able to do full playthroughs of games like Di uh, Dragon Quest 11, I mean, insanely, Lengthy. Yeah, the stroke um, mouth is still a thing. It is still a thing. In the old days, I never would have been able I don't to play know, there a was, RPG there's like There's every that. once you know in a while when I talk about the stroke, the alleged stroke, which is like, who fucking knows? There's somebody in chat that, that drops by and says the date that it happened. It was December 23rd or whatever. And a timestamp for a video or something. And then I go and watch the video and it's nothing. So I can't figure out the stroke lore. But I it's mean, very interesting, like, but it's like, it's... It's weird. YouTube audience would never have watched it, but, but now we have a group of people who just enjoy whatever I do. They like the more laid back streams. They'll come and watch me do those lengthy playthroughs. You see what I mean? Same thing with Final Fantasy IV that I just completed. Um, that's goal number one. No matter what I play, every day I get a good consistent viewership who are supportive and enjoy what I'm doing. That's key to success long term, in my opinion. Instead of, oh, jump on whatever the next fad is. Jump on the flash in the pan you know, hit or new release, you've got to be able to have a stable grouping. It's kind of like I said earlier this year, <clears throat> ideally, I think the way to be successful streaming is to have a core group of things you do that people like. And then when new releases okay. come out, that's great. You'll get an inflation in views. You'll get an inflation of people who come check out your streams. But you want to have that core group of people that are there no matter what you're playing. Whether it's This is like like my streams. The core group of people is that people that watch all kind of the DSP shit that I do. And the new releases is when DSP throws a, a hissy fit and I can clickbait people into something that happened. Like when Keemstar <laughs> dissed him. Minecraft. That was a, a new release. Black Ops 4 Blackout or multiplayer. Maybe every once in a while throwing in a fighting game like Smash or something. You see what I mean? No matter what I'm doing, you guys are here to hang out. And then, oh, it's great. We get we get a nice increase when there's a new release. Oh, that's that's kind nice of the increase. opposite of the old mentality where it used to be. Phil just plays all of our new releases. And then when there's no new releases, he fills dead time with stuff that no one really watches. I don't want that. I want it to be the flip side of that. Okay? So that's goal number one. Goal number two. I seriously hope that by the end of this year, and this is a serious goal of mine that I hope serious I can reach, goal. although I'm not really sure what much I could do. That by the end of this year, 
I don't have to worry about YouTube anymore. That if YouTube actually just went away overnight, I'm making enough money on Twitch to pay everything. Right now, I am not, okay? Even though on Twitch, every month, I'm making about... Oh, man. I'd say two to three times as much as I make on YouTube. Um, I still rely on that YouTube income. I want. I need to increase my viewership and increase the contributions on streams that I get to the point where I don't need to worry whatsoever about YouTube. If YouTube falls and goes apart, if they destroy my fucking YouTube channels and wreck everything... I don't because this year, last year, 2018, really primarily the reason that financially so I got hit badly was because of YouTube. His, you his like, goal was to uh, essentially make YouTube, burn the bridge with YouTube. That's what he wanted to do, not worry about YouTube anymore. See, number one, they completely turn off DSP Gaming because it's linked with Google, with, um, Google Plus. That was Which their is, only Yeah, that shit is ridiculous. That shit is ridiculous because it messed up so much when Google Plus went away. That fixed. Then I leave my partnership with Curse and they fuck up my ads for over three weeks and I can't advertise. You see what I mean? Like, and it was all because of YouTube. If I didn't have that tether still to YouTube to get stuck to them and rely to them on income, then I wouldn't have to worry about that yeah, shit. Thank God everything went perfectly smooth on Twitch. Right? I could just say, ignore that and just focus <laughs> on the street. And, and hopefully one day when he plays Danganronpa, something doesn't happen. Huh? How does that huh huh Dreams. this is all i care about Wait, is this just for me or or is it happening to everyone oh, it happened to destiny the streamer oh okay so it happened to other people oh no you guys the subs are going away forever forever keep focusing on huh? making new, new fun stuff and huh? hanging out and having fun on a daily basis but sadly i'm not there yet I need to keep focusing on these streams to make them better. Keep making this them holy go shit. Up, 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 okay? up, up, up. Well, just like now. This was like, what, three years ago? Over three years ago. Up, up, up. We're back in mission one. And then hopefully in general. Now, his target was to get rid of YouTube. And now we're exclusively on YouTube and hoping for YouTube to get better. Um, um, Things will be better. Huh? Okay, but I'm not there yet. I can't. I still rely on that income. I need it. Okay. Um. And then, I mean, the other plan for 2019 would obviously be figure out these finances with the Getting taxes married. and everything. By the end of April, raise enough money to pay the taxes so I don't have to worry about a lien on my house or a payment plan I can't afford, selling my house and all this shit, you know. I'll be very honest with all of you. You know, Kat and I have plans for our future. It's stuff that we want to do. And it's not, oh, spending Getting money. Married. It's like... You not know, spend money <laughs> our relationship and you know people have said many times about a pet and stuff hey guys can i have major plans to spend money in the future we can't do any of this because we're locked into not knowing what the hell is going to happen are we gonna by the end of this year have to sell our house and move and have everything get ruined don't and worry I hope not. that doesn't but, happen you know it sucks because our lives are on hold because of bullshit and that's life, I guess, for me. That's kind of what I've just come to accept. At one point, I used to sit here and rage about it constantly. Oh, I'm so angry. I don't even get angry anymore. I'm just kind of uh, a little saddened and disappointed that my life is always kind of at the whim of some horseshit that can happen and screw me over. And Because your whole life depends on random people on the internet. That's why. Take control of your life. Do something. Go learn something. Always Come been on. Like that. Do something for yourself. What I can say, though, is I'm incredibly grateful of you guys and gals who helped me out and have allowed me to keep doing this because it would have been years ago that i had to stop doing this and and lose everything if it weren't for your help all right Maybe that would have so been good that and understand if he I stopped doing this before he moved to connecticut that uh, before he moved to washington that would have been a major dodged bullet yeah he probably wouldn't have been playing on a playstation 5 nowadays in this house but yeah a few months I may be talking about doing things I've never done before, like a marathon stream. That's like 16 he, he's plus He's definitely going to do an a April Fool's joke, and it's going to be lame. The game, I try to beat it. Or it's going to be that he retires or something. Goal, like a speed run or a challenge run where I'm trying to do something for an extended period of time on stream because I need to raise funds for these taxes. And understand, I wouldn't be doing that stuff unless I absolutely needed your help. Um, and that's a big goal of mine is to be able to stay here this year. Somehow get, you know. And then, of course, refinance. If I can refinance this house all these problems would be fixed like all the, the most of my debt would be wiped out and i'd be in a situation where things would be much better for me but i have to get to that point life is and good like, is the like future and drake okay okay um real quick blake shelton to me a dollar says are you and cat fans of the voice no i used to watch it when the first season and i never watched it after that cat i don't think has ever watched it thank you for the dollar tip, what the by voice the way. um 
Pidar shoot again. So what's your plan on effectively achieving the first goal? Um, when he, I guess when he's talking about the streams. Um, bottom line is uh, the best cool. way that I can do that. Nothing. I'm gonna to keep listen. streaming and oh what? Listen to criticism. Into your feedback. Oh, listen to feedback. To improve the streams based upon what you guys and gals say. I've noticed recently that since I've instituted changes like implementing more chill events and streams rather than worrying about new releases that you guys have been attending more, you've been loving that stuff and you've been contributing a lot. So it seems to me that at least the initial changes that I seem to be making are working. So just sticking with those changes. The and looks not, at the camera, they're so convincing, man. A lot of other factors I really want to believe him. You know what I mean? Give I him money. Finances and everything. Not letting that stress me out. If I don't let that stress me out and I can put out fun streams every day without that coming through. I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I see. Man, I really wanted to send him that laptop. I wanted to send it to him real bad. I'll be successful. But that's really tough. It is very tough that I turn on the stream and I got to turn off in my mind all this shit going on behind the scenes and somehow just focus on a positive stream. Especially yeah, that's if it's how um, a working a job works. AM, or I know taxes are coming. It's all bearing down on my head. It's tough. Imagine this guy to, having to get an actual job. Separation so that when we're here on a fun gameplay stream, we're, don't, we're not talking about that shit. You know what I mean? All You're right, still on mission Bureau, one. 1500 bit cheer. I said, I can't wait for Resident Evil 2 tomorrow. Keep doing what you do. Dude, peace and love. Thank you, Quiffy Bureau. I also cannot wait for tomorrow. Let's talk about music. We now have a question from... Oh, crap. I can't center this. There we go. Question from Hermano Carl. And he says, hey, Phil, I know that you said you don't usually have time to listen to any kind of music, but could you tell us what are the music genres that you generally enjoy? How has your taste in music evolved over the years? Do you have a specific Obviously, band? religious like, church music well, first, because well, he went to the, the Catholic school. Listen to music, Choir we're talking music. the 90s and the early 2000s. It was mostly rock, alternative rock, meaning grunge Nickelback. and that kind of stuff, um, or metal. All right, Lincoln bands Park. such as I'll just give you a few examples of some of my favorite bands from back then Bush, Stone Bush. Temple Pilots, right. um, ACDC, Shout that out ACDC, um, was really good stuff in my opinion. Now, over the years, I'll listen to stuff every once in a while. But, like, for example, the band Muse, I really like them. Um, chill. Ra, that song, Do You Call My Name, was kind of my anthem when I started on YouTube. But I don't actively listen to music at all. In fact, when I'm in the car driving around with Kat on our day off, she usually controls the station, and she listens to a lot of random stuff. Sometimes like she listens what? to, like, uh, like metal music. She actually listens to baby metal from Japan and stuff <laughs> like that kind of music. They're but bumping it in the car. They're just driving and, and playing baby metal. Then she listens to... Um, some K-pop stuff. So I actually right. got, like, I got exposed to bands like <laughs> BTS and stuff like that. From her. I got exposed to BTS. It's like he got radioactive. It's toxic. Huh? <laughs> he was driving in the car in a, in a bunch of Chiki Chang Wang starts, starts singing. Huh? Huh? Her, I didn't know what the hell it was. Okay, to like, but when, when they asked her uh, when she was at the stream with him, I should probably watch this later. I love watching this. I've probably watched this like 10 times on the stream. Um, when they asked her later, who is your favorite guy? And they said Jimin or whoever, like weird, like BTS stuff. He didn't. She didn't understand any of those references. He was just sitting there <laughs> blank faced. Like, okay, I understand. It kind of sounds like, honestly, it kind of sounds like the n late 90s boy bands pop music that was super popular in the what? United States. So for me, it kind of sounds like the stuff I used to NSYNC? listen to in the 90s that was all over the radios. I mean, there's, um, I, I guess. And then I, she, I, she also band. listens to just way variety of music. She started listening to like uh, Indian Bollywood OST. music just for variety's sake. And I was like, wow, this is kind of interesting. It's Bollywood like music. That's pretty chill. To hear what they listen to over there and stuff. Um, and it's funny because again, you see a lot of common commonalities in what they do versus what has been popular in like the West here before. It sounds like older Western pop music. It does. So that was a bit. That's kind of the stuff that I'm exposed to <laughs> more recently, but I don't actively listen to that. I really don't actively listen. Yeah, um, I like the old stuff, stuff too. Know, Man, I, he he used to have some semblance of soul back then, and and some energy, and now he's just like a melted man, being in denial about everything, everything, even stuff that there's no need to be in denial about. I just don't have time to listen to music when I'm not streaming. I'm usually I don't have other I don't off. have time to listen to music. You can listen to it in the background while you're microwaving fucking pasta. 
a lot. I don't have if time not, to I'm listen to music. I'm or wrestling, something like that. And I told you to relax. I play hey, mobile wrestling. games. I do grinding and like mobile games. Oh, I play mobile games and I do grinding to relax. Hey, what was this lore? I wonder if this is going to come back. When I'm not streaming, I'm usually doing other work offline. If I'm not, I'm watching television or wrestling, something like that. And I told you to relax. I play mobile games. I do grinding and like mobile games and stuff. Huh? And that's it. Like I don't listen. I don't sit huh? around and listen to music like a lot of people do. I thought you don't play mobile like, games. I, just, I don't. Okay. Um. Uh, but this was in 2019. It was it was perfectly okay to play mobile games in 2019 and to grind. But then people started asking, "Hey, DSP, when you when you grind in those games, do you spend money?" All those people are making fucking conspiracy theories about me. Bill, is there a reason you stopped doing game reviews? This is a good question. I'm glad you asked it. Does it take too long to I'm make? I was wondering because I enjoyed the Hateful Truth series and was wondering if you would ever bring it back. No. The reason is you don't I have mean, time yeah. to edit them. I'm sure people would still... He did, but it was like a raw a raw thing. It was just bad. I don't like the unedited couch reviews. RJ Nickens, the bottom line is, even though there is a group of people who definitely enjoyed my reviews over the years, and for one, at one point, I was known They're as one not of the enough. better game reviewers. Like, what What point? On YouTube, because of my very honest style. I didn't play really punches. Honest style. Even games that I loved, I would criticize and tell you the negatives, while other game reviewers would gloss over them and kiss the game's butt. Vice versa. Some people would bash the living shit out of a game and never be fair to it. I would kind of be fair. <clears throat> um, A few things happened over the years. Let's talk. Number one, YouTube began demonetizing edited style content videos. Okay, and this is just me being honest. Oh, no money. I had a channel called right, KO money. Gaming in 2016. My goal was to have that be a major focus, and I did that year. I was making tons of edited videos, The Hateful Truth, but also countdowns, montages, all kinds of fun stuff. My reviews were getting oh, tons of views. One of them got a million love, views that year. The love that I have for KO Gaming is unmatched. That year. That's insane. There's no other channel that I would like to watch other than KO Gaming. One. Insane, right? Then in 2017, YouTube changed all their policies, <laughs> and I'm not videos. exaggerating, demonetized all the videos. And it's actually, if you know anything about DSP, and you watch 30 seconds of, of a KO gaming video on mute, so you don't even know it's DSP, you'll know it's a DSP video. It's just the laziest shit. On KO gaming. No explanation why. Was it because there was adult content? No. I didn't even swear in those huh? videos. Was it because I was doing copyrighted content? No. Like, there's no demonetized swear in everything. those videos, no though. Now, it was weird because then I go to my other channel, DSP Gaming, which is raw, unedited gameplay. Almost no videos ever get demonetized on that channel. Nice. So the raw stuff is fine. The edited stuff all gets demonetized. YouTube will not explain why and won't prevent any method for me to not have my videos demonetized anymore. So in reality, when I was doing game reviews, I was putting a ton of time and effort. You know, sometimes eight, ten hours into a, a review, wow. put it out, and then it gets demonetized. I make no money. That long? So it's not worth it. It's a waste of time. Okay, I have to do things that pay the bills. I should, honest, it's my I job. should do a, I, I should challenge myself to make a KO gaming video and, and see how long it's going to take me to record a voiceover and just like have a, a random thoughts of a video game. I work for 10, 8, 8, 10 hours, not get paid for it. I need to get paid to pay my bills. Well, um, the bottom line is YouTube doesn't care. Huh? So then in 2018, I did care. a few small reviews. And essentially what these reviews were, were just me sitting here and talking to the camera live on stream, recording that, doing a spoken word review, and a then spoken word releasing review. that on YouTube. Essentially, those didn't do poorly. Don't get me wrong. They didn't do great, but they also didn't I didn't, do I didn't play enough of YouTubers Live to, to actually review it. Anything. Because I was so bad at the game, I couldn't progress. Uh, because I was playing as DSP, so I couldn't make any actual progress because of how bad those videos were. However... Not what even I noticed the is that those work. videos took time away so much from me streaming. And the bottom line is right now... <laughs> I begged the, for so many subs and it didn't work. What I enjoy doing the most, and what you enjoy doing the watching me do the most, is stream. Whether it's live gameplay, talking like this in the vlog, whatever it is, you love this. And you love me this. having to take time away from a set stream to do... Oh, I have to take 30 to 40 minutes out of my stream today to do a review and then we'll start with gameplay. People don't like that. They just like, get right to it. Get to the meat. Get, get right to, the to it. Right. Get to the so, meat. What about the daily I, podcast after about that we do half nowadays? Twenty eighteen, I said I'm just gonna stop doing reviews. Like, there's no point in me doing edited reviews because YouTube demonetizes everything. I make no money on it. If I do the spoken word reviews, they break up the streams to the point where people, are, oh, it's it's a breakup. We don't like that. So I just did stop doing them. And 
essentially my year end countdown this year, my game of the year awards and my most disappointing games ended up kind of being extended reviews like yo by the way long video uh, by the way any reviews for games uh speaking of this the the topic of the year-end countdown thing fantastic mr sam has a great video about it where he edited that thing uh what what is it hold on how was it called i'm completely tweaking out it's like three o'clock uh where the fuck is this this should be here he is. This is it. He edited a DSP thing, and it's it's this long. Uh, you should go check it out. This is the video. It's great. And he actually made him tolerable. And you can see as a as a demo. Let's let's watch a little bit of it. Forms through this room. The Emmy will randomly spawn in an area that might get you killed immediately. Now, when you get grabbed by one of these Emmy robots, you do get an opportunity to do a quick time event in conjunction with what you're seeing on the screen with their animation to escape. But it is incredibly difficult the to time matches. the quick time event reversal and escape the grasp of the Emmy. And sometimes it feels oh, like and there's, uh... it's a hell of a ride. It's a lot of content. It's a great value. It's a great plot. Check it out. Lost Judgment, a great game. All right, guys. So now we are about to head into the cream of the crop. Top. And you see, you see what he did? He he cleaned up the picture and now it looks good. It looks like high quality. Five games of 2021. In my opinion, the number five best there game of zooms, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this is a little bit too ambitious here with the with the lower third on the screen. It's very ambitious. Uh, DSP would never do this, but the other stuff is, is still pretty reasonable. It still like makes sense for it to be a DSP video with you know, some effort put into it. And it actually makes it watchable. And it's not that hateable. Okay, let's go back to this. That normally I would have used to review during the course of the year. Did I send the video? So that being said, no? is this um, the one? No, I, I honestly, I think what I'm doing now is the course. I, you guys just have to understand there's transition and there's change. And sadly, one of the changes is that a lot of the things that were lost when I was a full-time YouTuber are just that. They're lost. When I was a full-time YouTuber, it full made sense for me YouTuber. to sit down and do edited, review, and release. Oh, I hate all these labels, man. I had to become a full-time streamer to survive. So being a full-time full streamer, this, full that kind of that. review just doesn't fly anymore. If you want this, my actual review for the game, there's two things you can do. Watch the playthrough of the game. Or have you bitching and complaining for like 30 hours? Credits, I will give my overall summary. I usually won't give it a number score, but I'll give you my overall feelings and summary of how I felt about a game once or, I beat it. Or, That's kind of a review in summary. Or it's not you can just go on his Twitter and he's going to post a tweet about it. Hey, everyone, I just finished playing this game and I liked it. That's it. As in uh, it's uh, three in the morning here. Depth and as detailed as my old reviews used to be, but it's still a review of sorts. Those are the two ways you can get game reviews, okay? Um, apologies that things change. Certainly, I never would have instituted these changes if I wasn't forced into them by YouTube. It's YouTube's fault 100% with all the shit that they've changed and messed up over the years. Um, and it is what it is. It's just a reality now, all right? That I don't do these uh, these reviews anymore. They're not coming back in that form. They're and you need to get used to the new it. ones or, what can I say? Look to someone else for your game reviews, all right? If anything, I can nice say this. Of, uh, um, what was this? A kickstart. He used to drink kickstarts back in the day. What is this? Thoughts on playing two games at a time like other streamers. Hey, one more him, question. The shills. Um, from Nariaki. He says, in the past, you said that you juggle so many games at once because you're a variety streamer. Well, I watch other people that I would call variety streamers. They have a very different method. Um, what these other variety streamers do is choose one or maybe two games and stick with it what they pick until they beat it. As a result, those streamers beat games well before you do, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Dragon Quest XI as a couple of somewhat recent examples. I mean, the, Why don't you this try is to both long-ass games. And, and, and Especially Odyssey. Uh, I'm not going to go on a, on a tangent, uh, on a massive rant about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Hear it back to... But I will say in, in Valhalla, they added a bunch of new options about enemy scaling and difficulty and stuff like that. It makes it actually kind of better. Two games at a time, one for day streams, one for night streams, just to play through those until you beat them. I think it's more focused method would result in you finishing games faster, maybe even enjoying them more. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. A couple reasons why I won't do that. Well, you do that. First is, as a variety streamer, two games is not enough. 
For example, well, if I'm only playing two, Dark yeah, Souls he on plays the first like stream, couple games and Dragon Quest on the second except stream. Except now when, when he just plays Elden Ring and something else. Well. I don't know. He's just so tangled up in his schedule that it makes everybody else confused. Because when you talk about something so mundane so much, it just confuses people. Because I didn't even know that it was his day off today. Some people just, first of all, don't uh, like turn-based so RPGs. Sad. That's already out. And some people are just burned out on Dark Souls. And this is your answer. Let's go back to the playlist. What is this? Thanksgiving special. Dark topics. Let's talk about dark topics. I'm going to go make a coffee. So what I'm going to do is click on a timestamp. And you guys are going to listen to it. You goddamn son of a bitch with this loud fucking bullshit. What are you thankful for? All right. Let's let's yeah, hear the thankfulness. Oh my god, he looked actually your meals, which is pretty great. Human. So, it's is the best I can say. All right. I'm going to go make a coffee. That's what we're eating. Now, what am I thankful for? I oh, mean, what is he eating? Okay, this is what you're going to hear first. For two minutes. Positive vibes Pro happen. Probably I'm going to be back by the thankfulness part. Happy eating turkey. Yes, many, many people today will be eating turkey. And so, um, one of the things that I will do and get out of the way before we get to the questions is a couple things regarding Thanksgiving. First thing, everyone's going to ask me, what am I eating today? Okay. Well, I'm eating a combination of food. I'm eating a combination of stuff that my parents actually bought for us and sent to us and stuff that we bought and are making on our own. So, my parents... Uh, bought us some stuff. My mom loves watching the home shopping networks and stuff on television, and she saw a big deal, so she bought us this Thanksgiving package that included a big roasted turkey breast that's smoked and coated with this, like, uh, brown sugar honey glaze, okay? And what you do is you bake it in your oven, and it heats it up. It's already pre-cooked, but you bake it to make it warm, and then you cut it into slices, and you, you know, pour gravy and stuff on it. So we've got that. It's like five pounds, crazy amount of turkey, um, it also came with some sides. I think it's like a mac and cheese side and also like some kind of a uh, sweet potato casserole side or something like that. So we're going to be eating that, but we bought our own stuff to have with that as well. So we're going to be having just some basic like stuff, stovetop stuffing. You know, we don't have time to make complicated stuffing or anything like that. So just quick stovetop stuffing. Um, some cranberry sauce that we bought, you know, canned cranberry sauce, nothing too complicated there. Kat is going to make her own homemade uh, mashed potatoes, which is good. I haven't had homemade mashed potatoes in years, so that'll be great. Um, some rolls of butter and pumpkin pie for dessert. So a crazy amount of food today. However, we're going to be saving this food and having lots of leftovers. We already have at least one major meal planned that's just leftovers, and I'm sure we're going to be having many more moving forward that are leftovers of this. So good stuff. A great, big, hearty feast uh, for Thanksgiving for us and with lots of leftovers and everything, um, you know, for, for our future meals, which is pretty great. So that's what we're eating now. What am I thankful for? I mean, holy crap, do I have a ton of things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for my loving family, my beautiful, supportive wife, Yo, cat, I'm back exactly on time. Jasper, who I don't even the, care what he ate. That was all a scam. I got introduced to this this year. I'm uh, thankful for everything. So but his his lighting is pretty good in this. I don't know how he was lit, but it's, it's way better than anything he's got nowadays. And the quality of the camera is so much better. This is in 720. In 1080, probably not much different. It is different. It is much better. What the fuck? Because nowadays, and I'm going to play his his actual video, so I'm not, like, misrepresenting him. Nowadays, he looks like ass. And I'm talking about not just the camera quality. Look at this. This looks kind of worse. This at least, uh, yeah, lighting is a little bit too much, and he kind of looks like, so much, bro, so much joy and fun to our lives. So much fun. And now he looks like this. Good evening, everyone. Phil here. And Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Daily Wrap. This is a great one. This is a great new layout. I haven't seen this one. I've just seen the thumbnail. But it's obviously a, an entire thing. That he can't even bother to edit. So he needs to press start recording and stop recording. Come on, DSP. This would take you like actually a minute in Premiere Pro to cut out. This fucking embarrassing part of the the lean in, the lean in, because this is the kind of shit that makes you look like an amateur, even though you've been doing this for like 15 years, 20 years, 60 years, <laughs> the type of lean in like that. 
this is not a live stream. It's a video. Come on, you can uh, cut I'm it out. I'm amazingly grateful that I was able to, over the last couple hey, of years, Hey, Raziel, the lost. House, What's up, man? Keep things going around here. You know, I, I've said this many times, guys. The only oh, reason I'm still here good. and I keep going is because of you. So, you know, They're I'm still incredibly going. grateful for you guys, you, the viewers, who you keep of coming course. back, keep hanging out with me. My streams now, in my opinion, are at an all-time high. I'm having so much fun playing so many games a variety of yeah games. Th Just this is a pretty impromptu stream because i was supposed to play games and then i decided uh, i don't want to it's too much effort and, I, and i'm too bad <laughs> i'm too trash time. in games i mean in one week i can play it's kojima's fault rpg style game like pokemon uh, uh, an action-based first person shooter like modern warfare um you know a, a kind of a action adventure game like star wars finish right. up a, a game that you can't even categorize like death stranding um i'm playing minecraft you know i'm doing more variety of stuff coming up this week street fighters coming up later this week and every stream is unique and fun and different but so much fun that's what i mean like it's not like i, I when i used to do just youtube i would feel a lot of the times like man i'm in a big rush to finish this project or this game because i have to move on to the next right away i don't have those pressures anymore i just come to stream i just have a relaxed and good time with all of you and you guys support that's that super positive you, know, you guys support would, that oh, you know but dsp how about you're thankful and you express your gratitude in actions? How about this? How about maybe someday you come on the stream and you have an impromptu marathon that is just unannounced out of nowhere. The, the thankfulness marathon or whatever. Some shit. Some random shit. That's not paywalled behind a tips goal. That's just something that is good for the fans. Just fucking try man come on it's not that hard there's so much shit out there Let's fill this and, do it like and it's one of those things where you when you get into doing it it, it engages you to do it more because they're gonna appreciate it you know the pay pigs are gonna appreciate it they're gonna show up and start giving him some more money and then he's gonna want to do it more and i mean this with like all kinds of shit he can play a surprise game he can just uh i don't know wear a surprise outfit that he got from the internet all kinds of shit all kinds of shit literally but then people are like no we like the new phil better we like the phil we we'll like the phil about hanging out with us and having a good time than being hyper focused on this gameplay and doing improv comedy during the games and stuff all that kind of kind of become outdated it's all gone by the wayside so that i could just have more meaningful interactions and streams with you guys and i'm grateful that you guys allow yeah, me to have do that for Brock a living Lobster. it's so amazing <laughs> And being quite quite upfront and, and frank and honest with all of you, some of the hurdles that I've had over the past few years uh, with all kinds of stuff, taxes and other things that have come up out of nowhere, and you guys have always been supportive and been there for me and supported me, I, I, I'm so grateful. Again, I would I'm not so be grateful. here. I would not be in this Stop house. Talking. Start I would not walking. be on camera right now on stream if it weren't for you. So thank right, you guys so on. very it's... much for that. And another oh. thing that I want to say as well, thank you to those who stick in there with me despite all the fucking nasty stuff that happens to us the trolling the nonsense that comes in and tries to to derail my streams and my content the outside noise right we've done a really good job these thanks past for couple being a good cult that's what he's trying any to say attention to the outside he noise everyone that tries to despite all the evidence against me you still believe me and you still give me money that's amazing disrupt everything and they try hard get don't get me wrong they try really hard but i am thankful that we have a dedicated viewer base who now you guys come by no matter what the new bullshit drama is that someone else fabricated or made up out there and you just come and hang out with me regardless and you pay no attention to the outside bullshit white noise and instead we just have fun on stream every day we just I, i'm fun. so grateful for that so thank you for the support for the amazing interactivity and the fun streams the amazing for thank you for the amazing interactivity this is what he's saying like what are these words what are what is this fucking <laughs> noise what is this thank you for the amazing interactivity <laughs> everything oh. huh how does that make any sense all right guys thank you so very much i'm so grateful. i love having a soundboard it it it, it yeah. speaks things that i can't say myself all right um, it looks like Vulcan did a 95-bit cheer. Says, Even though about, I just said what uh, it said on the soundboard. You know, doing Never a mind. fundraiser. Well, just I've thought about doing fundraisers noise. over the years. We're not going to get derailed. I know why you're asking that. We're not going to get derailed about that on the stream today. Uh, I tried to do fundraisers, and sadly, if I tried to do a fundraiser, the same thing would probably happen where people would be assholes to me and try to screw the whole thing up, and I'm not going to mess around with that, okay? Um, so there you go. Let's now...
get to the questions. All right, let's get to the fun questions on the stream. Okay. The fun questions right. on the stream. Oh, we still. Wait, wait, wait. So, this there was this was question time. This was what am I thankful for? And now we're getting into the questions. Okay. Uh, um, do I ever wear sweaters or other clothing? What? <laughs> Who asked him this? Second question today is said, hello Phil. When it's winter, do you like wearing sweaters? I look Who's this from? And hoodie in the cool months, but you seem to always wear T-shirts. That's from Blue Eyes White Dragon. Blue I'll Eyes just White say this, Dragon. You guys Somehow seem all of these people that send him questions, I never seen them in his chat, or they're not prominent pay pigs. They're just like random people. Be wearing on streams is not representative of what I wear off stream. I'm just being honest here. You guys see me wear a T-shirt like this. This is what I wear in my office on the stream. Once the streams are done, I usually put on other clothing. The rest of the house usually is not as warm <laughs> Do you as take the your office, skin like off? Right now, the reason it looks so bright in my office because the sun it replaces is the skin. On the front wall of my house. Oh, this was a great pause. Warming I wanted to get this pause. Once the streams with are done, the sun. I usually put on other clothing. The rest of the house usually is not as warm as the office. Like I said, the office. Right now, the reason it looks so bright in my office because the sun. <laughs> the sun. <laughs> this is going into the thumbnail. Since right now, I'm kind of using a placeholder because I do things on the fly. But this is going on a thumbnail. This is Praise the Sun edition. <laughs> the it's sun. on the front wall of my house, warming up my office artificially. Um, and so the office typically, I would say, is about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the rest of the house. The rest of the house, we have heat running because it's so cold right now. But this office is like super warm. Um, so when it's, I'm in here, it's so cold that the heat is the on. Same, you know, clothes that I would wear the rest of the house. Sometimes when I'm in the rest of the house, I'll wear a heavier shirt, a long sleeve shirt. When I go out, it's too cold out there to wear t-shirts. So I, I actually have sweaters, nothing that I bought recently. Okay. By the way. I have sweaters that okay. I bought, you know, back when okay. I lived in Connecticut. Do you have to tell us that when it's cold outside, you don't go out in a t-shirt? Do you have to put this as a part of your answer? Who is blue-eyed white dragon that is asking this? Are they 12? What the fuck? What is the next one? Oh, what, uh, thoughts on dark issues in games. Do people overreact and do they have a place? Would I ever do commentary over movies? No, because it would just be a, a podcast. And I mean, it's DSP. He doesn't watch movies. What is he going to say? Hey, look at this. It, it's an explosion. Uh, this All these questions are bad. Oh, there's SJWs. Okay. Continuing on. Let's see this question. Next question is from Alfred Aponte, and he asked the following. He says, Phil, I hope hey, that you're it's a good man. I wanted to ask you, have he you seen ask surge questions in anymore. your audience after you did that interview with the quartering earlier this year? I was one of those people that did not know much Yo, about your sometimes, story. Until sometimes it, it shocks me how much time has passed. Because it's like, I see the quartering as a couple of months ago, <laughs> essentially. Not even a couple of months ago, actually. Like, let's say a year ago or two. And it's been way more than that. Until you did that. I wanted to say I love your interaction. Because it's like so much shit happens with this guy and, and at the same time he just stays the same. Endlessly. Stream style, it's something that has meaning for us, your fans. Rooting for your success as a content creator. Also, what's your opinion on the absurd growth of the SJW and woke culture on games and other types of media? Okay, let's talk Like, woke. for example, attacking the Joker or the Mandalorian and the creation of gender-free controller for the Google Stadia. Oh, my God. Oh, what? All right. So this is a dual question. A dual question. The first half of the question is... How oh, long is he going to talk about this? Any kind of popular, 44? Me, any kind of positive Oh, this is going to be like a 10 minute answer. That okay. That I did earlier this year with the YouTuber named The Quartering. Yes. Immediately following that, I'd say probably for about a month afterward, I constantly saw an influx of new viewers saying, wow, didn't know about Dark Side Phil before, or I'd heard about him before, but I'd never seen anything that had humanized him after watching the interview. Seems like Nothing that humanized him. Now, admittedly, some people came and said, eh, streams aren't for me. They never came back. All right, we're having a derailment here since this is a stupid question. Let's see some highlights from the quartering interview. Uh, what is the, the thing? A DSP quartering. All right, there should be somebody we're not watching the whole thing it's a full feature length movie long discussion between two dudes that got gout what is what else the big lame interview this is 34 minutes this is still long what is this this is still quartering dsp tries it getting cancelled media foolishly tries ending dark side phil fucking nice uh all right then 
and then review tech usa has beef with the quartering apparently it's, it's all just like a, a weird slap fight between all dudes and they all got gout <laughs> oh why well, do they do like that came in oh it seems kind of interesting this is fun and they stay and that's really cool now much like anything popularity like that that kind of little surge is is temporary that doesn't stay forever after a couple of weeks no one's watching that interview with the quartering anymore you know what i mean so was there a small surge and a good positive feeling and vibe that came out of that absolutely is it lasting nah it's gonna it's gonna diminish and, and it's it's uh you know what you get out of it over time um but i'm just happy that i did it you know yeah, I'll be, that was I'll be awesome. quite honest, there were a, a few uh, other opportunities. I think he got paid, year, but I don't know how much. I don't care. That were similar Whatever. things. And I it's like at the end of the day, he gave money to DSP and it just evaporated. So it is what it is. Them, and I think I did the right thing. Because I actually feel that if I had done some things differently, that things could have turned out a lot more negatively for me this year. I think that I actually took the time to do something with a neutral party that made sense rather than someone who maybe would have just been about kind of baiting me into making fun of me the whole time. And I feel that it worked out well. But that um, would make him look bad. That's the whole thing he doesn't understand. If some YouTuber, even like semi-prominent, has an interview with Dark Side Phil and just like treats him like shit and baits him this whole time, he's just gonna make himself look bad. Yeah, I'm gonna laugh at it because I want somebody to make fun of DSP in an interview. I, I'm gonna make fun of it and it's gonna be funny to me. But the people that watch that YouTuber that expected an actual interview and not just mocking DSP the whole time or just mocking DSP throughout the interview, they're gonna be disappointed. So, yeah, now... But also having an interview, as we saw with him, is just boring because the guy is just kind of boring when you have to talk to him about, like, normal stuff that is not the drama stuff. Would I, a lot of people said, will you ever do stuff? The drama stuff gets him going. And when he gets going, then the gold dust starts flowing. Okay? We got bars on this stream. Huh? Like that in the future. Huh? I'm not against How does that make any sense? Actual, candid, realistic, fair interviews with people. I never was. I don't know why people would want to talk to me, though. Like, I feel like, how relevant am I, right? I'm 37 years old. Yes, I've done YouTube for 11 years. I've done live streaming full-time for two and a half years. You want to talk to me, to me about those topics? Great. But outside of that, you know, I think that there's a lot of people... But what are you going to say about live streaming? You're bad at it. What? People who are much bigger than me, those are the people you'd want to talk to. Why do anyone want to talk to Dark Side? That's right. It blows me away. Streaming. Does anyone even want to talk to me at all? Right? Like, I don't see myself as, as like, a important figure or an e-celebrity or any of that shit i never have so i don't understand why anyone would even care about that um you know um so it is you know it is what it is but i i do feel that the positive stuff came out of it and it was a good thing for me to do and i'm glad i think it worked out the best case scenario seriously i think like it was like the best of uh, for dsp i guess what yeah i could have done this year I did the right thing like i said there was actually one thing that earlier this year i was thinking about doing and i actually decided against it and i think it was a really good choice based especially based on the things that happened afterward i definitely think it was the right choice to make okay um now your second half of your question what do i think about the growth of sjw and woke culture and all that? listen listen culture changes over time right it's like i just said in the 90s it was commonplace to include overly amounts of gore swearing and sexual content in video games to get that shock factor to get teenagers to run out and buy said games now not to say that that stuff doesn't still exist in video games it does but to a much lesser extent than it used to i think what's happened is our culture has evolved and changed now that in general it's not widely accepted to have that gratuitous um stuff. it's not that it's not expected but if they have it then the rating by the pg is gonna change to are rated so less people can buy it i guess and also they make games nowadays to target the general market and they make games for everybody like assassin's creed that is a game that anybody can play anybody can get into even like kids so yeah that's why it's it's not as edgy anymore in games anymore people are looking more for an artistic experience when they're playing a video game right now everybody um, wants to go now, for course, the major market like anything you could go completely to the extreme and then it ruins it. It's all about what you say about these. It's all about moderation, right? It is. 
if you want to be have more artistic value and have a game that's appealing more to a, a wider audience than say a teen male demographic, you need to, to to kind of factor out crappy stuff that maybe is is kind of overblown and done for basically cheap cheap buys. I guess is what you could say. Um, at the same time, if you go all the way to the extreme the other direction, you're going to completely isolate an audience. You see what I mean? There has to be a balance somewhere. There has to be a balance found somewhere. All right. Um, yeah, that's so, true. You know, you, you're bringing up some examples. You're saying attacking the Joker movie, the Mandalorian series, and the creation of gender-free controller for the Google Stadia. First of all, the attacks on the Joker, which is that I guess the movie sensationalizes and even glamorizes oh. a killer. Okay. But yeah. we've had movies Come about on. this before. And last like, time bro, I noticed. You know who the Joker is. You know who the Joker is. You know who the Joker is. We didn't have like super what? What do you expect from the Joker to do but kill people? Villains running around, you know, like the other shit. I don't know. Mandalorians and gender fluid controllers, some shit. No, I don't in know. Real life, whatever. It's really do whatever about, you want. Um, Stadia. <clears throat> reality Stadia of controllers. Let's explain to people when you go to see a movie. It's fantasy. It's meant to be fantasy. All right. It's not fucking reality, and don't make it a reality, right? Um, or else. Last time I saw Transformers, I didn't see someone making giant killer robots either. You see what I mean? Like it's ridiculous. Um, at the same time, right, if they had made a movie where the, the, there's a monstrous, brutal, disgusting, vile killer and he's made out to be a hero, that's different, you see? Um, and that's not what the Joker movie was about. Uh, the Mandalorian, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know how Mandalorian was criticized, so I can't talk to that. Yeah, the creation I don't know of a that gender-free either. controller for Google Stadia. This is strange. A gender-free controller. Mm. Uh, from from my experience with the soulmate, she can handle a controller, <laughs> a human controller, How is a this male controller. Exactly, this controller. Like, what about this controller that I'm looking at? Is gendered. It's a device to control a, a console that has no gender. There's no such thing as a gender-free controller. It's just nonsense. So what I would say, oh, the Not gender-free controller dude, is on. nonsense. It's PR spin. To make come people who are all about the it's, extreme it's for real. think that it's something that it's not. There's no such thing as a it's gender free controller because game consoles don't have gender. Stupidity is what that is, okay? <laughs> um, shout out to Zebra, who resubscribed to the channel for 35 months in a row. Bottle crunch, everyone, look out. I'll try to negate the, the loudness. But why would you even want to Thank crunch you, it? For 35 why? Why? Three years, why? Awesome. Why? This is one of the bizarre DSP things that I haven't talked about. The the bottle crunch because it's not a thing anymore. So he wants to do the bottle crunch that he knows it's annoying, but he will try and negate the noise and like muffle it or whatever. But you don't actually have to do a bottle crunch. You can literally just. Even throw the bottle across the room if you don't fucking want to do anything with it. Why do you have to do a bottle crunch? It, and I know it was annoying because he knows it's annoying and people complain, but it's a thing that he did and, and he does it. And in some way he does it to spite the trolls because he knows his fans won't mind it, but the trolls will mind it because I'm bitching about it right now. A thing from three years ago. You got and me, Phil. Fluffy cows for I you. I did what I'm here to do. Give me five dollars. Says, what are two ways you could positively improve yourself? Positively improve yourself in the new year. Good lord. Oh, this is a this is a very good question, um, actually. See, I love when people ask me yeah, questions he, like he that. Yeah, he can but mute the mic. He can, in fact, mute it. Me. But no, right? it takes too much effort. That's not a question for me, really. That's a question for my audience. Like, oh wow, how do you think? <laughs> deflecting massively the question, the one question that was framed in a way it's like an interview right they want to ask you for your for your weaknesses but instead they're not gonna say what are your biggest weaknesses right now they're gonna say what are the things that you want to improve about yourself because you want to focus on the improvement part and the positivity not having weaknesses and that's why this dude asks him dsp what are the the things that you would like to focus to improve upon yourself in this new year i don't know man ask the other people ask my fucking chat that I myself as a content creator can <laughs> he can't even like year. like find any right. criticism about himself to fix. What about the bottle crunch? Bottle crunch, throat clears, maybe snorts. That would be something basic that I could think of for him to improve. Right. Um. By the way, my 
keyboard has failed. I'm trying to get a battery. I just cut my finger. Wait, we got 60 likes on this stream. Here. This is supposed to be an um, undercover stream. This should get I, very I little amount year, of likes. Come on. What I've done is I became a lot more of a laid back guy. I stopped getting all uptight and so many likes, man. How am I going to handle them? Um, this year, although admittedly, there have been times when things kind of happened video. that I need your help. It wasn't always about the sky is falling or anything like that. Um, you know, and a lot of times that meant kind of hiding things from you guys in the background. But at the same time, I think that that actually helped a lot. When you when you came in to tune into my streams outside of the early plug segment that I do, you never really heard me talk that much about money or anything like that. It was more about let's just hang out and play a game and have fun together, right? Um, so that was one of the things I did this year. I don't know what what do you guys what do you guys think I could improve? <laughs> um. In incredible this and is incredible way, generic yeah. things like oh no pre-streams and stuff like that is just stupidity that's not a suggestion that's a demand for something that's not going to happen bro he's exactly the same happen. fucking way today exactly the same way but but even more obnoxious and repeats himself even more the same fucking guy it's a purpose and a lot of people like it all right but i'm sure people would have different variations of suggestions some people like green screen <laughs> yeah here we go again and the why are you laughing at all that we the same know not gonna improve my content we know um, they're not gonna improve the same shit that i mentioned on the stream earlier everything that you suggest to him he's gonna rationalize in some way that it's not gonna improve the content enough to warrant him implementing it um, <clears throat> but yeah i see fluffy cows for you i wish i could answer those kind of questions but in general that's something that you turn to an audience to really answer right so you know i'd be interested to see what people would say um, yeah of course long term now here we go the what same, the same time. way to avoid don't always the question blame the game. i don't always blame the game that's a that's never a blame the game. game that's that's still of five to ten years ago. never that's blames the game. today so are you for real right. one, one more question and then we're gonna take a break yeah okay. the goatee definitely way more robust way more robust okay one more question for this part and this question is from Richie Seven, and he says, "Lately, it's been very difficult for me to make it to stream, so I've been watching some of your older playthroughs. Correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like you currently do a lot less improv comedy than you used to do back then. Not just non-PC material, but I mean just general comedic material. Was this comedic change deliberate material. or just a natural evolution over time? Going from the way everything is is just over glorified and overblown. He was doing comedic material." Why not just say jokes? You were making jokes. This is like I'm listening to the nostalgia critic talking about himself. Fuck, man. From YouTube to streaming. These, like, YouTubers that are so just self-absorbed and just fucking narcissistic, they're so bizarre. Because it's like, man, you play fucking YouTube fucking games. In Nostalgia Critic, he makes shitty skits. In, in reviews of movies, where it just explains what happens in the movie. And he yells a lot. You guys aren't, like massive creators like actual like people you know what i mean how do you deal with adversity i'm just sitting here being like huh how does that make any sense any stress and negative issues impacting you furthermore how do you come to a stream and perform without letting it show that you're dealing with stress behind the scenes any tips on dealing with difficulties staying positive and not letting it affect your work two completely different questions his first question is my commentary style has changed why did it change okay He's right. Back when I used to be a full-time YouTuber and I did not focus at all on stream interactions, I felt like it was me playing a game in an isolated room. And it was my job to make watching that gameplay through fun at all times. So that means oh, no. when there were cutscenes, the cutscene wasn't super interesting, I had to talk over it to make jokes. If there was gameplay and the gameplay wasn't super jokes? interesting, I, mean, I had to make jokes material. about it. When sometimes I would have to overly rage or overly complain or overly be over the top with something to try to fill dead air because otherwise, what the hell else was I doing playing a game, right? In particular, I would say games with a lot of open world exploration, games that were RPGs, etc. Those games needed a lot more of that kind of stuff. And admittedly, over the top stuff was something that I did a lot back then. Again, over the top swearing, over the top sexual humor over the top Racism. you know gender uh, humor he was stuff like that he was I gonna say it all... he was gonna say it he almost said it over the top racism he was gonna say it something that i did a lot listen to this Again, over Hold the top himself. swearing over the top sexual humor over the top you know <laughs> gender humor stuff like that i did it all the time to bring in an audience when i became a full-time streamer almost three years ago now things changed I kind of sat back and said, I want to know what is it that you guys want from me? And what I got from my audience was, 
dude, I'm not racist anymore, man. And he even even he realized that's a bad thing to say. Because you can't just say, I, I used to do racist stuff. It's like with Shane Dawson. Yeah, he used to do racist stuff in like 2011, but he was doing blackface and saying the n-word a lot. Yeah, you can't say I'm not racist anymore. It's not one of those things that it just kind of goes away. It's not like depression. The stuff that you're doing it's not like the coronavirus was great back then. It's outdated. That's outdated commentary. We we want the real Phil. We want to be able to sit down with you. The real Phil. And but I, the real Phil here, was the racist guy that makes sexual jokes. You're honest. That was the real Phil. And that's why he was popular because he was the real Phil. Opinions on what you're doing, but just hang out with us. Have fun. Be chill. Have fun conversations. Have fun. And the fun and entertainment factor will come naturally. It's not about having to be the guy who's always making the over-the-top joke and interrupting and ruining a cutscene with stupid commentary. It's more about enjoying the overall gameplay experience. And what I've noticed in recent years is, yeah, the, I don't... the overall experience with DSP sucks on on a massive amount of levels. Because, like, even you can say the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay could be watchable, I guess, if you're just a super random guy you're looking for day one coverage of a game that just came out and you happen to stumble on him if you watch five minutes of him playing the game so you get a perspective of what the game is about maybe this is kind of palatable but in the the general sense if you were gonna watch a whole dsp stream that's not it's it's just not a thing it's just not something why you would you do that the dude takes like 20 minute breaks between having to play games it's really not I don't know, man. It's not worth your time. Commentate much over cutscenes anymore. Um, when we're doing open world segments of games, we'll talk and interact more about other stuff that's not even related to the game in a lot of cases, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be 100% focus on the game anymore because it's not about that. The modern audiences want to see a different kind of content and a different kind of interaction. And don't get me wrong, that was hard for me to adjust. It was. I was set in my ways for the longest time, from 2008 all the way through 2017, nine years, I had done the same kind of content. And now I had to completely kind of uh, adjusting everything you that's know, your fault, to though. make it different for you guys. That's your you fault though. Because most people that you see that are even semi-relevant at any point tried to diversify while they were still hot. So they could still do their thing that they're known for doing and that it's their thing that they do but also do something else so by the time this something else is popular then they will be good enough to do it so they can transition into doing that if any of what i said just made sense i think it did you told me outright and he with him it's like at some point you reach the point where he has to change everything completely otherwise he can't keep doing this at all so it's really bizarre how he has to just do these sharp turns all the time. Right, this is what we want, not the old. The old Phil was fun for that time period, but you have to evolve and change with the times. And I feel because it's like there were so many people in the early YouTube stuff before vlogs were even a thing that started doing vlogs and just recording himself walking around. And by the time vlogs were the thing, where it was making a lot of views and daily vlogs and everything, it was the 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 norm at some point and by that point those people that started doing the vlogs earlier and transitioned into doing it they know how to do the vlogs and they're good at doing the vlogs so they profited at the height of the popularity of the vlogs to the best of their ability that over the but instead dsp he's gonna try nothing new until the new thing becomes old and then he's gonna transition instantly into that thing and know nothing about it and then be confused for five years straight just like with streaming because when he started streaming, it wasn't like a, a super hype thing when he was doing the Ask the King and whatever weird stuff he used to do that was a live stream. Hate Live, which was a podcast that was live. Uh, he could have stuck with that and branched out and d did more stuff and learned how streaming works. But eventually he became a, an interactive streamer and was just confused for a bunch of years straight. And didn't have like a uh, fucking didn't have an idea how to operate a stream time that i did this i become a better person a more mature person and the content that i put out there is more meaningful today than it ever was back then yeah back then you got a lot of laughs 
But also there was a lot of cringe, a lot of shock factor stuff that's kind of like, yeah, you watch it today, you're like, oh, man. You know, kind of kind of lean, they did that stuff. Now, you would come to any stream and kind of relax and have a good time with me and have fun interactions and just have a, a, an entertaining, fun, chill time and feel like you got something more meaningful out of it than just a cheap laugh. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. That is true. When he started uh, streaming initially, he didn't look at chat at all because he wanted to still stream and and be live and do the whole live thing but not interact with anybody so he could stu still do the raw playthrough for youtube because that's all he was thinking about and fuck those people that are watching live let's just say the laughs still come the laughs still come but it's not about always pushing that laugh narrative you see what i mean um so i do feel that today's stuff is much better and that's the feedback i'm getting even though it's funny do I get the crazy amount of over-the-top insane views I used to get anywhere? No. But people tell me now that the people who are here every day get more out of it than they ever did back then. And that's a cool thing. Okay? Um, <clears throat> now, the other half of your question, how do you deal with adversity, stress, and negative issues impacting you? And how do you stream and perform without letting it show that you're dealing with stress behind the scenes? Any tips on dealing with difficult right. times? Instead now we're going to talk about depression and difficult times. Yeah, I mean, you guys only know a fraction of the stuff that goes on with me behind the scenes that's negative just being honest with you if there's something that i really need help with or whatever and i have to tell you guys about it i do but in general you guys don't have an idea of the stuff that i'm going through behind the scenes on a daily basis there's some messed up stuff that's happened these past couple of years uh, and things that are private that i can't tell you you know and i you know i know that sucks for someone who used to be a hundred percent transparent with you the fact that i can't be transparent anymore it kills me it kills me that i couldn't tell you guys that not only was I visiting my parents earlier this year, but that I was going to get married. I would have loved to share that experience with all of you and been upfront and honest with you. And what would have happened is I would have went to Connecticut and we probably would have got swatted, pranked, and the entire thing would have been ruined and my family would have been put at risk. So I couldn't do it, you know. Um, it sucks that I, 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 that's the life I have now. But at the same time, I understand why it has the to be whole, like that. The my... whole Connecticut thing was so easily because right before it, he was raising money for taxes and then he went on vacation. And the thing wasn't just because he went on vacation. It was also because of how much he skipped streaming. He skipped like two weeks of streaming. It was a week. He skipped like a week of streaming, which is for him, it's like a, a more than a thousand dollars my own safety my family safe so it's like you cry poor and then you don't come to work and you go on vacation okay right now i could tell you guys a few things that are going on behind the scenes matter of factly that would open your eyes and you'd be like oh shit that's what's going on that kind of makes sense now at the same time if i told you guys that stuff there would actively like what, be the, people the who would go after me and try to hurt me because i revealed that information so i can't you know, it sucks. And that's what I mean. Like, there are days when some shitty stuff is going down behind the scenes and I come to stream and it really, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, man, yeah, I really hope that we have a good, a good fun stream today to get my mind off this shit because I, you know, I, I have to, I can't, I can't sit here and just be in a gloomy, bad mood because there's other bad stuff going on behind the scenes that I can't tell you about, you know, um, People are coming to my streams to get positivity and get fun interactions out of it. They're not coming to hear about my doom and gloom shit going on behind the scenes. But why do we hear so, so much about it? I have to. Why do we hear about Bills? Why do we hear about Tim's goal? To do my best. Why? To why do we hear about taxes? Person. We're not even supposed to know that they exist. Because he's here only to play games. I'm not even supposed to know that this guy pays taxes for all of you and it's tough you know as someone who has suffered from depression in the past and has feelings come back some some days there's good reason for it and other days it'll just come back for no fucking reason you know it's tough it's, it's really tough on a day when i want to feel like i'm making a positive difference and then you get people who come and just hammer in negativity to you on a stream all day long people who don't understand that what they're doing actively is fucking with your psyche um it's tough it's tough it really is you know it, it, it's tough to me as someone who i want to do i want to do good things and i can't always do the good things that i want to do because of the life situation i'm in um it's rough and it makes me feel bad it makes me feel down and i have to not portray that on the streams 
I have to not. I have to have the thickest skin of titanium and not let shit get to me. And it's funny because yeah, the moments when I might let something c come through. All right. The moments that I might let something come through. What do you mean, might let something come through, man? You let shit go through all the time. It's all the time. Basically, every day he gets baited into at least one rant segment. There is no day without a rant. All of a sudden, now look at Phil. He's supposed to have thick skin, but instead, look at what him. He actually is a weakling, and you look what he did. He raged, or he, you know, it's fucked up. It's like the double edged sword. If I don't show emotion, I don't tell you anything, people are angry that I don't share stuff. Then when I share stuff, people are angry that I'm like, oh, aren't you supposed to be the role model for everyone in the content creator who doesn't show that kind of personal stuff? Why are you bothering us with that? We're coming to your streams for a good time. See? So either way, it's kind of like damned if you do and damned if you don't. What do you really do? I don't know. I don't think there's a definitive answer to that. But I just do my best at this point. If I want to share personal stuff with you guys, I do my best to share the fun stuff. And not to let the negative stuff come through because there's tons of negative stuff I could tell you guys about and I don't think it would do anyone any good, you know, to, to know that stuff. I just try to stay fun and positive on the streams and I feel that if I stay fun and positive, you don't things do that. in general will work out. And even though every once in a while I do, there is something that happens that, man, I really need to raise funds in a short period of time out of nowhere. And it sucks I have to do this and kind of put this burden on my viewers, but I hope things work out. And then things work out. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. I'm like, damn, now we can go on and have fun streams again and not have to have this burden. <laughs> I'm so grateful. So let's just continue business as usual. This is so terrible. Because when you're grateful, you should express it by doing stuff, not just saying stuff. This means nothing. Him just doing prayer hands to the camera for even if he did it for four hours straight, that would mean nothing. I'm hanging on my fucking head. I feel probably that would mean something. Because it's doing something. And that's awesome, you know? So thank you for that. But yeah, like to answer your question, Richie, it's not easy. It's not easy some days to come to stream with stuff, negative stuff going on behind the scenes and knowing very well that things may not be able to still be how they are right now uh, forever. You know, I know that I have to make life changes and things. I'm, I mean, by the way, I'm making life changes and things. Again, it's things I can't share with you guys that are rough and are different like and the bankruptcy. are very stressful. Bankruptcy. To, to make ends meet and to make things so that they're not basically bankruptcy build up. Life. Um, bankruptcy and hype. I can't always tell you guys about it, and I have to come here and swallow it, Just swallow it, and keep it down. And you know, people ask me questions that if I answered honestly, again, your eyes were like, "Whoa!" But then my private information got out there, and now people can hurt me. So it's tough. It's very tough. People ask me questions, constant problems in my life, um, and I can't always tell you always tell you guys about it and i have to come here and swallow it just swallow it and keep it down and i gotta come here and swallow it it's a bus bus stream and that's it that's it uh i guess there is more of this nonsense Let's see how much more there is there's a ton of it how much more we got uh jasper records records joker controversy and loot box gaming gambling oh loot box gambling let's see the gambling I'm very interested about the gambling segment Damn, motherfucker. you son of a bitch every fucking time this question is from richie seven he says in your opinion are loot boxes or similar in-game random purchasing sim s systems gambling Companies like EA say they are no different than, say, opening a pack of baseball cards or Kinder Eggs. Others argue that they are actual gambling and come with all the possible addictions and psychological effects. Do you think there's any sort of regulation like age restrictions on these in-game mechanics? Or should companies be able to monetize their games any way they want? I'm interested to hear your opinion as a professional gamer on this topic. They are 100% gambling. 100%. The yes. difference is, what are you gambling for? And Nothing. the reason that there's regulation on the gaming industry as a whole when it comes to casinos and online gambling, like online poker, is because there's transactions of money involved, all right? But for some reason, we seem to have a hard time recognizing gambling when it's gambling for things that aren't monetary, even though it happens all the time. Um, you go back, buy a pack of baseball cards. You have no idea what's going to be in that randomized pack of baseball cards. You are spending money for a chance at something that you might or might not want it might have intrinsic value to you it might also have value to a collector as a sale later on so that's gambling um you go so dsp is pulling the hogans for intrinsic value to himself which is great 
So now we learn why. Because it gives him value. Subscription. Into a mobile game subscribe, on your subscribe. phone. For the sub and books. in your mobile game, it subscribe, says, subscribe. buy this pack of cards, and you have a chance to get the feature ball, ball card, the, the new character in the game that has all these amazing abilities that you need to do a special event that gives big rewards. Oh, by the way, the chance is so negligible that you would ever get that character, but some people will get lucky and get them. More than likely, you're just going to drop money after money after money and get a bunch of crap you don't need, but that's okay because, you know, it's not money that that you get as a reward so why should this be regulated right it's pretty crazy when you think about it loot boxes in in sports games <clears throat> you know again to get their characters for ultimate team or whatever it is um and then you've got things yeah, that, that maybe okay some people say that loot boxes and games are bad, so bad when it comes to things that can get you ahead in the game if you're going to get that character you're going to get that player you're going to get that item that's going to allow you to get better in the game or beat the game more quickly or get ahead in an online community that's messed up but what about just just physical thing what if, oh i did a loot box and now phil doesn't wear the cowboy hat anymore now he wears a dirty slipper on his head right wow, wow what a great loot box wow what a great screenshot Dirty slipper on his head. He actually put a slipper on his head for no actual reason. But for a gag, I guess. That was. Oops, well, no one wants the fucking dirty slipper. They were all going for the cowboy hat, but you ended up dropping $100 and never got the goddamn cowboy hat, but you got 400 dirty slippers, right? It's gambling. It's fucking gambling. There's no difference between that and any other kind of gambling. It's just that there's no monetary reward. So for some reason... So it's worse. It regu so it's worse there's no re <laughs> there's no difference outside that it's worse because there's no monetary reward so you can't actually win anything if you spend money on that regulating it for, you know for being fair when it comes to regulating it for for you know uh, outcomes we don't regulate it the same way that we regulate casinos or other kind of online gambling all right um so all that you know it, the the situation we're coming across now is gaming still when you really think about it as an entertainment form is in its infancy it's only gaming actual video games have only been viable as like something that that people would do at home and you know we'd be a, a big money making industry for about 20 years roughly i'd say it was around the mid 90s when things like the super nes the genesis started selling a ridiculous amount and now all of a sudden you get playstation to boom big money now gaming is the biggest industry in the world more than movies more than television more than music and now all of a sudden people start recognizing it only now we realize these practices have been around for a long time and we start to realize how messed up they are you know how many kids want to play Fortnite, and they beg their parents to use their credit cards for another randomized drop of loot so I can maybe get the fucking unicorn outfit that I want rather than being able to just purchase it outright, right? Um, and really, the reason that people spend so much money on these games, mobile games in particular, are the biggest. Even oh, though people listen to this. To this. Saying, oh, listen to this. Like this is a great, great, great segment. Madden and games like that that are really bad. Because... Um some people i guess are still questioning the champions thing and that's i don't think is disputable in any way because this dude was telling us all his schemes he was telling us all of his ways of uh, of doing it and he, he was telling us how he was buying gift cards for itunes and everything he was telling us everything and he told us about ww champions let's listen to this yeah this shit the mobile gaming industry almost every oh shit I clicked on a different thing. Now I need to go in my history. Ah. Every fucking game okay, on a mobile phone has this model where we will give you the game for free with very limited content. But if you want to progress at all, you got to spend, spend, spend. And they hook you. They actually do things to cause addiction. They will sell you a $5 pack of value. So you get a ton of value out of this $5 pack that's only available once for $5. If you want that same value, you have to spend $20 again. Oh, by the way, if you keep spending, 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 now you have an increased chance to get the character that you want, or you get now get the crafting items you need to craft the special card or armor piece or whatever you need to beat the stage so you can progress and keep playing the game, and it becomes this gotta keep spending, gotta keep spending, gotta keep spending mentality that wraps you into this model that never ends. You know, most mobile games don't even have an ending. There's no, oh, I beat it. <laughs> I put this quote in uh, one of my first videos. It's instead an, not en endless events, it's a great endless quote. things to do to keep spend, spend, spending. That is the penultimate form of gambling. There's no... <laughs> the penultimate. 
the penultimate form of gambling. Huh? How does that make any sense? End game. When you're gambling huh? for monetary value, eventually you hit the jackpot. You don't have to gamble anymore. You're rich. There's no end to this. You will keep spending forever and never reach the end. You'll never, you know what I mean? It's actually the endless golden goose for these game manufacturers. And somehow this isn't regulated, but the casino is. That's crazy to me. Like to me, it's 1 million percent gambling and it needs to be regulated ASAP. And now you may say, um, did I say penultimate? What I meant to say was the ultimate, the final thing, <laughs> the not the next to last thing. I didn't mean to say penultimate. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Thank you, Chad Warden, for calling me an idiot instead of just being nice about it. You're a real dickhead. Okay, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. He's a this dickhead. This could be he worse. Called you out for being the actually gambling. wrong. When you go to the casino and you blow all your money, it's visible that you did it, right? This. Yeah. Imagine that you're just draining your bank account, you're draining your fucking credit card, wow. you're draining stuff behind wow. the scenes, and no one's the wiser of what the hell's going on. This is this is more fucked up in my opinion. And of course. Oh, I'm so happy I did this stream, and I wasn't playing fucking Death Stranding all night. Huh? What was I thinking playing Death Stranding? Huh? 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 Now we got a, a the, the gacha boozer himself explaining to us where all the money went. Explaining to us. You know, the mic is telling us how his scams work. This is how good he is at his scams. For transactions, the loot boxes in console games is just like a as tutorial. bad. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That's the worst. That's the absolute worst. And it needs to be uh regulated in my opinion. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Now you may say, but wait a minute, but the whole gaming industry is now based off of this, so what's gonna happen? I don't fucking care. That's their fault for building their whole industry off of dishonesty, addiction, and fucked up deceptive practices. You know? Um, every single time that you go to buy a microtransaction in a game, they should have to disclose publicly the, the chances of you getting anything. They should. They should literally they say, well, should. if you buy this loot pack, you have a one in a million chance of getting the what you, what you actually want. You know, you have a one in three chance of getting garbage. So that way people will be like, fuck, I'm not going to spend that. Maybe what would happen is if people really realized the odds of what they were doing, the chances of them dropping money would be so in infinitesimal that then the company would say, okay, we have to up the chances of you getting the good thing, which means people wouldn't repeat spend, 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 spend. You see what I mean? Um... So there you go. Spend, That's spend, my spend, opinion. Spend, spend, spend. Is yes, it needs to be regulated. Big up, Scrub. Um, yes, it is. Shout gambling. out to your buddy Grug. And yes, it is a problem. Is it as much of a problem as uh, as people are making it out to be with children? That I couldn't answer. I don't know how children are getting such crazy access to payment structures. How are you getting access to your parents' bank account that you can dump four thousand dollars into Fortnite a month? I don't understand that. Unless the parent is such an absentee parent that they're like, I don't want to deal with this kid. I just give you an unlimited bankroll. Just do whatever you want. That could really be bad. I mean, regardless if it was there, them spending money in Fortnite or going buying whatever they wanted online, it's just as bad in my opinion. Um, but I think in general, just humans, forget children, humans shouldn't be humans. subjected to this gambling. It is. It's bad. It's an addiction. It, it could hook you. It, it, it could be an illness that you can't stop. If we have compulsive gambling with in, in casinos and cards, and stuff, it's the same thing in this. Why can't we stop it? Why can't we regulate it? It's got to stop, in my opinion. But what can I say, right? Um, Mark Murphy just tipped $6. Said, I agree with your loot box point. They should just charge a flat-out fee for loot, telling you exactly what you get, but not offering any advantage to those players who don't buy. There should be proper systems to allow you to get it in-game if you don't buy. Right, and here's the thing, Mark. The reason that they hide it behind this randomized uh, loot box system is because that's their defense. They could say, well, this game is not pay to win because it's random. You could spend as much money as you want and you might not get the item that gets you ahead in the game. It's random who gets it. But it is pay to win because you need to still spend the money to even have the chance to get the item that gets you ahead in the game. So their their defense of that is complete horseshit. Um, and all it does is creates this mentality of spend, spend, spend until I get what I want, even if it costs me a ridic ridiculous amount of money. When in reality, you're right. It should be, okay, that new character in the game costs $300. Holy shit, I'm not dropping $300 to get that new character, so I guess I'll never get them, right? And what essentially what would happen is people would stop spending uh, in, as much as they do. And you would have whales, is what they call them in these games, who do <laughs> spend that. And when you have an upper class who has... <laughs> What a great fucking segment. I love this Ask the King. They call them whales, really? How do they call them again? Oh, Phil, Phil. Right? 
And what essentially what would happen is people would stop spending uh, in, as much as they do, and you would have whales is what they whales is what they call these games who do spend that and when you have an upper class who has everything and everyone else has nothing the game dies so essentially what would happen is uh you guys can clip that i have clips on my videos you can they clip would have that. i'm too lazy to clip it change the model if you clip it i'm gonna put a timestamp on it to make everything more fair but then that's Big not ups, uh down forward pun for the three months of support uh it says a very open wallet thank you for busting it wide open b b baller alert super profitable for them so the whole gambling industry of gaming would go away and we'd go back to how it was you would actually have high level triple a design expensive to make but actually super duper quality games like god of war like, like red Dead redemption Ray. 2 you'd get these games on the regular instead of these game developers slapping together unfinished pieces of donkey do and then putting microtransactions in to try to support that it's going to make money in the long run Gaming would actually overnight be improved if we got rid of the loot box model or regulated it so that these the game developers had to be honest about it and they wouldn't make money on it anymore. But that's the problem. It's become a burgeoning million, if not billion dollar industry of this gambling and games. What do you do? Okay, then. What do you do? You, you keep spending. Oh, continuing on. That's Super Flash asked two different questions. First question is... Oh, hold on. Someone just said oh, there's another side of the argument. They tipped me a dollar and said the other side of the argument is that modern AAA game companies need the microtransactions to offset the game development costs because the consumer is always demanding better and bigger games. That's a, that's a, uh, uh, that's a cop-out. That's a cop-out because look at God of War. Zero microtransactions, game of the year, right? And it sold like hotcakes. That's It's a complete and utter cop-out. Yeah, but they're probably talking about microtransactions in like Fortnite and shit, you know, stuff that is free. That's probably what they're talking about, because God of War is a full price game. What it is is greed. It's we don't want to take a cheat. Oh, and he was look at how aggressively he picks his ears. On having to make I should probably just screenshot this. Zero microtransactions, game thumbnail. of the year. Right? And it sold like hotcakes. That's it's a complete and utter cop out. What it is is greed. It's we don't want to take a Oops. chance <laughs> on having to make a good Game, Very nice. and it doesn't sell to the point where we're multi-billionaires. That's all it is. It's greed. It's these companies greed not is massively strong. realizing that they can't have an insane cash cow with every fucking game they put out. They have to put out a library of good games that builds up a reputation so that people will buy all the games from their studios like it used to be. It used to be when you buy a game from Capcom, you knew you were getting a great game no matter what. Now, oh, this is the one that's shitty and has microtransactions in it. This is the one that's a AAA game that has no microtransactions and is good. Didn't used to be like that. It used to be every game was good out of these major game publishers and creators, but it's not like that anymore because they all went easy mode. They saw the big money train rolling in with the microtransactions and they took the easy way out instead of actually wanting to put in the time and dedication to make good games. And now, if they get regulated, they're all going to get fucked in the ass for it and they deserve it for being the ass lazy for it. and greedy. Uh, Vincent just cheered. He said Mario Kart Tour is another gambling it. nightmare. I have not played it yet. I don't know anything about it, but I guess I get. I'm, I would assume. I mean, if we're talking about EA, Nintendo, then yeah, they deserve it. A thousand percent. Surprise mechanics. Get the okay. fuck out of here. Bitch. Um, now we get to Super Flash's questions. He asked two questions. My nose is itching. Oh, that was not this. his first question. My this? nose is just itching out of nowhere. I don't want to. Tips goal for a frog okay. aquarium. His first question is: Would you consider? Making a tips goal for a frog aquarium in 2020 would be so like cool if you did. What? I'm sure everyone would be mad keen for it. It would be a great way to repay the fans and frogas for all their support. The Two frog answers is. to this. Number one, it would be incredibly irresponsible <laughs> because I need money to get by and pay my bills. I don't have disposable income to put on, on something frivolous like that. That's number one. Number two, my cat would go crazy chasing frogs in the aquarium and knock it over and try to attack them all day. So the answer is no and no. Second part of your question, he says, right. You, Wings of Redemption, and Rich from uh, Review Tech USA are my favorite content creators, and it pains me to see you guys don't see eye to eye. Oh, of but course. that's your business, and I'm sad. Jim Wings uh, and anything Rich. Said, anything Jim Wings is and in Rich. any. In saying that, though, would you. In... What? Okay. There's no. He Bro, didn't put any. You, you've read this like, question already, though. Commas or anything in this sentence, making it completely unreadable. All right. Now he's saying, of course it is. In saying that, though, there should be a comma. Would you consider doing a weekly podcast with some of your mods, 
comma, or even no, do some more collab no, with Brian. That would be so dope, dude. Uh, by the way, I just, okay, with I no was just doing the, the thumbnail for, for this stream in the background, and, and this is the thumbnail for this stream. <laughs> from the sun pose from earlier. Very chill. Punctuation, that was almost impossible to read, but now I got it. First of all, I will say this. I have no problems with anyone until they fuck with me. I don't give a shit of about course. other content creators. I don't. But, but if you I fuck with can't. me, what about now Toby I'm going to have a problem with you. I didn't know who the hell Toby Turner was until he started advertising for his own YouTube channel on my videos on YouTube. And but then I had a problem personal, with though. That's okay. not him going um, around. Did... Wings of Redemption, I never knew. Did he do that, though? Did he intentionally put ads on DSP's channel or was just random? And this dude took it personally. I knew who the hell he was. Hmm. And I guess at some point he had offered me to be on his podcast. I said, okay. I got sick and couldn't be on that podcast. Oh, I got and sick. And he told me that he would then reschedule. And yeah, he bitched out, by the way. He wasn't sick. He, would, he just me bitched at a future out. date about being on it again. He never gets sick. Come on. He, he streams every never fucking did, day. Went on his podcast and lied, said he did. And I blew him off and I was lying to him because I was back on my own content streams. And apparently I was just being a dickhead to him and blowing him off. Okay. Then, later on, years later, he wanted apparently to do like Battlefield co-op with me. I said, okay, contact me at darksidefillahotmail.com. He yeah, never did. This is, but this is why he's so lame. Because he acts like he's this celebrity. Uh, send me a business email at fucking darksidefill. No. Can I send you a DM on Twitter? Maybe on something else? Why do I have to send you a weird-ass hotmail fucking email? Why do you have to be this fucking... The fake rock star. Then he told his viewing audience that he did, and I had blown him off again. So well, maybe he did, because DSP himself admits that some of the emails go to spam, some of them he deletes. Whatever he reads, he reads. Look, like it's, it's the same way he runs this channel. It's the same. Why shit on Earth would I ever want to deal with this guy who has now habitually twice lied about me in our interactions? when there's no real benefit to dealing with a person like that. You there's know what no I mean? benefit. Now, Rich from Review Tech USA, talk about, I'm sorry, a bipolar guy. A bipolar because guy. Because sometimes he'll come out of nowhere and he'll make a video about me that seems very nice. You know, three years ago, when something very embarrassing happened to me on the internet, this guy actually made a video that was kind of defending me and, came and said something nice things about me. He was like, I think it was an honest mistake. This guy is obviously incredibly embarrassing. It's good that he's coming out publicly and saying that he admitted to it or whatever. He did a good thing, and I think he's going to be fine, right? Great, so this guy has my back. He's a good guy, right? Then he proceeds to make videos out of the blue. What? Why DSP Gaming is failing miserably, and why Phil's business is going to go out of business huh? soon. And it's like, huh? <laughs> what? So wait a minute. <laughs> that was great. Huh? How does that make any sense? You just made a video you saying I'll be fine, and then two well. months later you say I'm going out of business. First of all, how is it your business? You, do you know any of my business? Do you know my financial? You see what I mean? This is the kind of guy that but Rich bro, is. No, it's, it, that's the thing. It's really easy to see because you ask for tips all the time. Yeah, they know your financials because you ask for tips all the time. That means your business is failing. He is a drama content creator. Okay. He creates drama in his videos. Okay. With pure speculation to get clickbait what views. What is speculation? That no, it's obvious. Your channels are trash and you were making emergency videos. And that's why he made a fucking video about you. Is who he is. At one point, he wasn't like that. Years and years ago, he used to be reliant on YouTube where he could do game tech reviews. And people came to him for that. And he realized that wasn't lucrative enough probably to pay his bills and make a living. Can you blame a guy for changing the kind of content that he makes if he needs to make a living? I guess not. But, oh, but wait, you nowadays that you can blame him. Nowadays, you can blame them. Do it as someone else. Because <laughs> nowadays, those people that changed is because they failed. They failed miserably and they wanted to desperately make a living. So they, they changed. Uh, what time is here? It's uh, 4 12 a.m. This is expense. That's a bad thing. And the fact that this guy repeatedly brings my name up in his content all the time, completely speculating, no evidence of anything, of anything that he speculates about, just, I wanna talk out of my butt negatively about someone, okay? Um, that's fucked up. And the thing is, when you look at Wings- Yeah, somebody Redemption, send him a dollar tip, calling him out on spending money. This guy rich, I've never yeah, done that stuff getting, to them. Never did I, leans. you know, go out of my way to screw them over. When have I ever made a negative video about Rich or anything? Never. I've never done anything you like should. that, ever. That in my history, that's going to be fun as fuck. I want DSP to start making videos about people and put their faces in the thumbnail. 
I want this to be a thing. I've never done a damn thing like that. Um, they go out of their way to do stuff about me at my expense to get a little boost on there. You know, I'm sure Wings, oh, I talk about Phil, and now I get a little bit of extra attention. I make him look bad. This is a good thing. Rich, oh, I got a big views boost today because I talked about Dark Side, Phil the Lol Cow, and it's great that I got another view video because I had no other content to put out today because I'm a drama Phil creator, so I create cow. more drama, and it's good because it lines my pockets with fucking money. Um, that's the kind of people they are, you know? Okay. Um, One of my favorite things about the ESP is this... Uh, these quotes all the time man i'm doing this and this for these specific exact reasons that dsp always knows what those reasons are man i'm gonna make a video about dsp to monetize him because he is so popular and so viral that i'm gonna make a video about him and it's gonna get millions of views i don't know what else to say i, don't know I what really else don't to say. um the thing that gets me really honestly uh about rich and this is in particular what? about him is that he's been the victim of really horrendous trolling he has a family you know he has i believe he has a wife and kid he has a family that he needs to defend and needs to protect from trolling and he's been the victim of really bad trolling over the years um what where his then? personal family and stuff has been attacked supposedly which i think i personally as you guys know supposedly. i think that's really fucked up I think that's horrendously fucked up that anyone would ever do that. But yeah, then he goes off and creates drama in his own videos that the people in those videos could then be negatively affected by people because he talked about them negatively. It's like, so you don't want to be the victim of trolling, but then you make videos that create trolls for other people. And somehow you're morally okay with this. You know what I mean? Like, talk about ultimate hypocrit hypocrisy. That's the, the core, that's, that's the definition of hypocrisy. Is I only create controversy on my channel for views and to make money for myself but then it, on everyone else's behalf everyone else is negatively affected but then when i'm negatively affected by trolling oh my god it's the worst thing ever how, how dare you people leave me alone you know that's fucked up in my opinion but that's just you know that's my honest opinions i would never deal with those two i would just not at this point of course why on earth would i want to deal with people who have gone out of their way to make me look bad when I've never done a damn negative thing to them, well, that's like asking for fucking trouble. Can you imagine? You're asking for fucking trouble. Yeah, the rich thing, the rich I can get, but with Wings is different because DSP actually pussied out of doing the thing and was too much of a bitch to actually say he didn't want to go. All or right, whatever. if you do that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, okay, and I guess that's it for this stream. I'm going to head to bed and let's listen to... Uh, some random people talking about some random guy on a random song. That uh, this one's for all my baby girls. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks everybody for showing up this late un thing. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Death Stranding gameplay. That was the penultimate part of this stream. All right. Uh, see you around. Starts to click, you know. If someone just keeps saying sorry when they do something, uh, they're not really apologizing. Right? If you just, if you, apologizing isn't just words, it's I will not do this thing again because I feel bad about it. Um, if you keep doing the thing, you're not, it's not actually an apology. You have no respect for people that are alive, for fuck you people that are dead. You don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. You have no respect. Apologizing isn't just words. You have no respect. Well, do you value money more than our friendship? But that's the way of them saying, we want nothing to do with Phil at all moving forward. Let's make up a bunch of shit or twist a bunch of shit to make him sound bad because everyone hates him now anyway on the internet. So let's make him look like the villain so everyone will believe it and we'll just be washing our hands of the whole situation and we never have to deal with him ever again. And you know what? Look what's happened. Literally, no one bugs them anymore. Nothing. It's all, they're completely washed. The cans are clean. You have no respect. For people huh? that are alive, for fucking people that are dead, huh? You don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. YouTube doesn't care. You have no respect. Apologizing isn't just words. Huh? It's I will not do this thing again. You have no huh? respect. Because I feel bad about it. Huh? He huh? watches How does too that much make any WWE. Sense? John starts getting text messages at five, five, six o'clock in the morning. That huh? means it's like two o'clock in the morning there. Uh. So now, when you start reading them, you start looking at it, uh -huh. and it doesn't make any sense why he's even texting. 
and and it's not even coherent. So you start wondering if the guy was like if he's been drinking and texting. Huh? How does that make any sense? 